netcasts originating from the birthplace of the oil industry. We are the stream. Tonight, the Rockets are on the road to take on the Sagertown Panthers. Our coverage is brought to you by Farmers National Bank. Come home to Farmers. By Donovan and Bauer Auto Group for GM and Chrysler on the Hightown Road. By the Colonial Machine Company, proud supporters of the Titusville Rockets. By Morrison Builder Supply for all of your home improvement projects. By Big G Tire and Auto, get back on the road with Big G. By Middleton Chiropractic, start living a higher quality of life. By Blue Kill Graphics for all of your custom screen printing and embroidery needs. By Armstrong Cable, one wire, infinite possibilities. By Titusville Area Hospital, high tech, top docs. By Acorn Acres, for funeral, weddings, or everyday arrangements. By Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall in Titusville. And by the Cranberry Mall, for everything you've been looking for. Rocket Football on the Stream is also brought to you by the Titusville Moose Family Center 84. The Blue Canoe. Bars Insurance. DNS Printing. Hasbrook Sand and Gravel, Erie Insurance, The More Insurance Agency, Boonies, Great Food Daily Specials, and Helsing Gracie Jiu Jitsu. And once again, good evening from Cannon Memorial. It's Titusville Rocket Football as the Rockets are on the road to take on the Sigertown Panthers. And a very good evening to everyone joining us here tonight. My calls check Jim Bodimer, Luke Rio to bring you all the exciting action of tonight's game. The Rockets coming in tonight 0-8 and, and the Panthers are 0-8. And, and this is going to be quite a matchup, Jim. That really should be and it's a game that uh, both these teams are after. I think they've been waiting for this one the way the season's been going for both of these ball clubs and uh, uh, they're going to come out here. I think we're going to see ourselves a real hard-hitting football game. I expect it to be really well. It's always nice to watch two teams who are uh, skilled and competitive in terms of uh, talent and so on. And that's what we're going to see here this evening. Both these teams struggling, but both of them have the capabilities of coming out and playing a big ball game. So uh, that's going to be fun to watch. And uh, Mike, what a nice night for football. We've had eight weeks of good weather. This is the 25th of October. We still don't have any wet field. This is pretty decent field. This field's in good shape considering the snow that we've had the last little while. But uh, just another good night uh, for football in Titus, or Titusville in Pennsylvania. Yeah, and it, you know it's uh, you know the weather's a little on the cold side, but uh, still it's good football weather. It's the way it's meant to be played. Well, it's deer season. It's got to be cold. So yes, <laughs> it's, it's the time. That's the time of the year. But uh, nonetheless, so this is going to be a good one. I I really anticipate that Titus will have a little bit of trouble. We've always had trouble against the uh, double wings, and uh, second time likes to run a wing offense, and Titus will always get caught in the counter. So it's whether or not Titus can defend upon that, and uh, just a lot of little things that will be happening here this evening that we'll have to watch for. And of course, we'll have all that for you as our pregame show continues. All righty, when we come back, we'll go over the keys to tonight's game for the Titusville Rockets. And again, we'll uh, also uh, talk about uh, the Sagertown team. We want to also uh, say thank you and hello to our friends on uh, Armstrong. Yeah, it's really neat that we are able to uh, partner up tonight. And uh, Armstrong's providing the video for our, our broadcast this evening, and uh, we're able to do the audio. So, uh, yeah, nice to team up with them. Look forward to it. All righty, quick timeout. Pre-game show continues right here. It's Rocket Football and Sagertown Panther Football on the stream and Armstrong Cable. We'll be back right after this. Hi folks, Joe, Mike, and Mike here from Donovan and Bauer Auto Group in Titusville. We know times are uncertain right now in our country between health care and unemployment. And what we do know is that Donovan and Bauer offers a large selection of new and certified pre-owned vehicles and the service department is second to none. So while the government may be shut down, we're not. Whether you're looking to buy a vehicle or just get your car winterized. Stop in the Donovan and Bauer Auto Group and join us for their Jeep Celebration and Truck Month. On the uh, High Town Road in Titusville. Hey, 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 that's more like it. That's what I've been looking for. Fall brings great savings and haunted happenings at the Cranberry Mall. Every Friday and Saturday into the first weekend of November, it's the Dark Domain Haunted House. Plus, get ready for the holidays with great savings throughout the entire mall. I'm Phyllis Rapp, owner-designer here at Acorn Acres Floral Design. Acorn Acres has been voted best florist in the oil region for the past six years. Each design is created with a recipient in mind. Stop out or give us a call at 814-657-8599. For funeral, weddings, or everyday arrangements, contact us here at Acorn Acres Floral Design. 
Big G Tire and Auto on the High Town Road in Titusville is your home to the largest selection of tires for small compact cars to large semis. Need an oil change, inspection, or repair? Big G can service your vehicle while it's in the shop. Protect your vehicle with our fluid film undercoating to keep the rust at bay. Big G will keep you on the road. Tires for any size vehicle and auto repair. Come see us at Big G Tire and Auto on Hyde Town Road in Titusville. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. And welcome back. Another homecoming tonight, guys. This is, what, our fifth one this year? Yeah, five of them. We seem to run into them. It's always fun, though, to watch these other schools uh, in, in their homecomings and uh, to see these kids and enjoy their, their senior year and crown the kings and queens and all those kinds of things. So, uh, yeah, look forward to it. It's, uh, always, it's always a good time. All right, guys, let's take a look on the Titusville side of things, uh, the keys to tonight's game for the Titusville Rockets. Jim? Well, first of all, we talked about uh, this all the time, Mike, uh, the offensive and defensive line. Football is one, I think, in the trenches. And uh, if you can control the line of scrimmage uh, on both sides of the ball, I think you have really put yourself in a good position to, to win the football game. And I think that's going to be critical here for both teams tonight, not just Titusville. Uh, yeah, and, you know, I agree with you on that. But uh, one of the things, too, is Titusville really does have to establish himself on the offensive line, uh, you know, making key blocks. Uh, you know, defensively the same way, staying at home on the counters. We saw them get burned on that last week. Yeah, Grove City got them big time on that. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, uh, you know, as far as the line goes, the line play on both sides of the ball are going to be, ve- it's going to be very important tonight. The other thing we talked about, and we've talked about this in pre-games or earlier in the season also, is limit turnovers. Tiles has had a, a habit this year of giving up that last three-second touchdown pass in the first half kind of a thing. You've got to limit your mistakes, and you've got to uh, take care of the football. You can't, uh, uh, you just can't be turning the ball over. You just have to be able to uh, control yourself in terms of uh, handling the ball. Yeah, and I, and I agree with you because, you know, that's the difference between a team, let's say, that's 6-2 uh, and two and 0-8. Oh and eight. Um, you know, you don't have the offsides penalties. You don't have the holding calls after you've just gotten a 20-yard gain, you know, when you're trying to establish your running game. Like you said, you don't give up touchdowns, so 30-yard touchdowns with three seconds left before halftime. Just little things like that, That's you know, makes a huge difference. Yeah, of course, that's our third big key to the game, uh, cut down on those kinds of plays. Uh, you've got to control them with the line of scrimmage. You'll see whether or not Tassel's defense in this 4-6, this monster thing that we play, uh, can control the line of scrimmage against this double wing. Can we penetrate and uh, give uh, Kudahi a lot of trouble on the, as far as his throwing game is concerned, the quarterback for Segertown. So, uh, but, you know, these keys would work for both both teams, Luke. Uh, we looked at the, the schedule here in terms of the scoring. You just had in your hands here. And uh, the region games, and the only real significant difference in the games was the Grove City game. Uh, Tynasa lost to Grove City 48 0. Uh, Segertown lost to them 82 to 14. But uh, other than that, the scores were relatively the same all the way through. So statistically, it appears that this is a pretty balanced uh, ball game tonight. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the Grove City score, Jim, but if you look at the Hickory, both teams, Titusville, Segertown, Titusville lost to Hickory 70 13. Hickory beat Segertown 77-0. I mean, uh, and it just goes on. Wilmington, Reynolds, Greenville, Sharon. Very much the same. Very much the same. Uh, Which kind of excited us about tonight. You have two teams that are pretty evenly matched coming out on the field. And you can, you know what, at this point in the season, we're week nine. You you put this behind you in the past, and you focus on tonight's game. Both teams coming out here looking for a uh, win. So, yeah, you really do. And, and one of the things that I, I alluded to here before the first break, Luke, was that uh, how much fun it is to watch two teams that are uh, talent-wise and, uh, and size-wise, everything like that, are com- very compatible. And as long as they play good football, good fundamental football, uh, I don't care if they're 0-8 or 8-0. and 8 or 8 and if, they're, if they are competitive with one another and they play sound football, it's fun to watch them. It's high school football. And, uh, and that's when it's really fun to watch is when you get two teams out there that are competitive with each other and uh, play good football. I don't like sloppy football, but I like to see good football. And I think that's what we're going to see here this evening. Titus, well, if you saw the video, uh, came out very focused. Sagertown shown enthusiasm here tonight. Uh, Mike, uh, just a few years ago, you were out on the field. What's going through your mind as you're coming out here in week nine? Uh, well, you know, in the situation they've been in, I'd be looking – you know, I'd be thinking about what I did last week because, you know, defensively they, you know, I know the score was 48 to nothing, but they did show a lot yes, more defensively. 
Uh, you know, the, the fact is, in a nutshell, you know, the offense, uh, they had trouble moving the ball on offense. And, uh, you know, you can't keep your defense out there forever and, and expect them not to give up points. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, Titus Phil has got to be excited. They've been progressing, you know, for the last few weeks, and it's going to give them a chance to play against, like you said, somebody that's uh, – they're evenly balanced against. It'll be interesting to see what the emotion is like uh, in the first uh, series of downs or so. Uh, both these teams wanting to get this first win underway under their belt, and uh, they're going to be both emotionally charged because they both know they can win this football game. So uh, I think emotions will play into it for a little bit here as we get things underway. Jim, it's homecoming here for Sager Town. We saw them break through the banner. Uh, how much does that eat away at the concentration for tonight, having these extracurricular activities going well, we on? We talked about that last night when we did the volleyball back home, and uh, it was senior night at Titusville, and uh, I thought the Titusville girls come out and played a, a very good client uh, 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 team extremely well, and I don't think the emotions had a great deal to play with. I think once you spot the ball down, once you kick it off, things really change and you get yourself into it. And your national anthem here at Cannon Memorial Stadium. It's the Rockets and the Panthers. And our pregame show will continue and kick off just moments away. We'll take this time out. It's Rocket football and again Panther football on the stream and on Armstrong Cable. We'll be right back. Titusville chiropractor Adam Middleton welcomes you to the Titusville office of Middleton Chiropractic. Dr. Middleton is committed to improving the function of your nervous system so that you can have a higher quality of life. Through their office, you'll receive the best care through the use of modern chiropractic techniques and technology. Call us today and we can develop a chiropractic plan specific for you. 827-9970 or visit our website for more information. Middleton Chiropractic, your chiropractor in Titusville. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall in Titusville invite you in to view some of the finest jewelry in Northwest Pennsylvania. Morelli's is also home to unique gifts from area artisans, including chocolates from Roma Lo of Erie. They also carry an extensive selection of engagement settings and loose diamonds to create the ideal ring for the ideal person. Morelli's also offers jewelry repair and they buy gold and silver. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall, Titusville. Welcome to Titusville Area School District's presentation of Titusville Rocket Sports on the screen. And the captains are meeting out in the center of the field. Of course, they had the, the uh, toss of the coin before the teams went in after the warm-ups. We'll have to see now which way it went as they uh, will now be separating the teams to uh, tell us who's going to kick off, who's going to receive. Could be an important uh, part of the game, who has the first offensive series. And uh, it appears as though... Sagertown has won the toss and it appears that they may have deferred. They did. Which means that the Times for Rockets will receive the football and we'll get the first offensive possession here this evening. So we'll see real quick whether or not Titus can move the ball against the team of Sagertown, the defensive team of Sagertown. Sagertown is a pretty good sized team and uh, they have some young boys out there. Uh, Gilchrist at 205, uh, Austin Rose at uh, 230. 
Uh, they have a Spencer Price out there at 235, so they got pretty good size going out there against the Tinesville Rockets. Uh, we always talk about how these teams are, especially the Tinesville team, has been outweighed at the line of scrimmage, Luke, all season. Say, the same thing has happened to Sigurd Town this year. Tonight we're pretty well balanced up. Uh, both teams have uh, about the same weight per average, I think, on the line. And uh, so uh, that's not going to be a major issue this evening. The issue is going to be can we control the ball, can we keep the turnovers down and uh, for Titusville, and can they uh, get their offense going, especially that running game. We haven't had a running game all year, Mike. And so, Yeah, uh, I think, like I said, that's going to be a key. You know, you just got to keep the defense honest at all times. And that's what, uh, you know, that's what establishing a good running game will do, especially with the style of offense they play. Kevin Tomini, Dwayne Kohler, and the other guy, Jeff Corey, Mike Kolaschek, <laughs> Jim Bodemer, Luke Rio, set to bring you ex all the exciting action of high school football here tonight. The 0-8 Panthers and the 0-8 Rockets. Austin Rose will be doing a kicking for Sagertown back deep for Titusville is uh, Corklin and Aaron Lee standing back at about their own 10. Rose waiting for the whistle. And we'll get this underway. Here's the whistle and here's the kick. And the Rose kick's going to come up short. It's going to be taken by Signs. Titusville signs at the 30, out across the 35, and going to be hit and brought down at about, checked at the 30 to about the 32, did not get across the 35. And he's brought down out there at the 32-yard line, and that's where Titusville will put it in play, first down and 10. It was a short kick and a low kick, you know, so, I mean, they, there was no chance at establishing any blocking, really, so he had, <laughs> to, he had to make what he could out of it. <laughs> well, that happened last week, and signs took that thing back about uh, 35 yards. This time, yeah. uh, Sigurdsson covered it pretty good. Titusville now will send double white outs both sides. This is a normal offense for Titusville. Aaron Lee in the backfield. Corklin at quarterback. Out of the shotgun. In motion comes Gianti. The ball's given out to Gianti. Mike comes out across the 35. Cuts it upfield and is brought down at about the 30, well, maybe the 36. See at the spot. Pick up about three on the play. Yeah, I think he gave him to the 36 for the way it looks for another spot. Maybe about three, four yards on the play. Bring up second down. Yeah, we'll call it second down and seven uh, for Titusville. Quickly out of the huddle once again. Doubles both sides for Titusville. Wide side of the field will be to Titusville's right. Not that it's had a major effect. Corkin looking to throw, dropping straight back. He wants to go deep. Has a man deep. Oh, just overthrows him out about the 40-yard line of Sagertown. <laughs> And uh, that was uh, a pass that could have been caught just a little bit too far, intended for Zach Carter. And it'll go bring up a third down and seven for Titus. Will the ball spotted at the 37-yard line? Yeah, and I, the thing is, if he would have connected with Carter on that, uh, he had some good yardage ahead of him. He, yeah. I, he might have made pay dirt even. A couple yards uh, over his head. Double wides again. Now Titus will make the switch. He'll send trips to the left. Tassel stacks him now in motion, signs to the right. The ball's given off to Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee cuts out across the 35 to the 37. He's hit. Now he drives across the 40, and he's going to get the first down as he takes it out close to the 45-yard line. Good effort in there by Aaron Lee. Picks up enough for the first down for Titusville. Yeah, it was a good, good eight, nine-yard carry on that. Uh, <laughs> moved the chains on it. Good second effort. You know, just fantastic out there. Uh, we, we saw that last his, week. Kept his legs grinding. Yeah, we saw that last week with Aaron. He had that good second drive. Again, Titus will send doubles wide both sides. Lee stays in the backfield. Wide side to the right for Titusville. Corkin dropping back to throw. Throws up short. Oh, almost Whoa. intercepted. I'll tell you, Schultz over there came up and almost had a better shot at that than Aaron Lee did. Yeah, brings he, up a second down and 10. Yeah, he really didn't, uh, if you take a look at that, he didn't zing that ball. You know, he just kind of lofted it up there. Oh, I'll tell you, we got and away then, with one yeah, there. Yeah, he would have been gone. Schultz would have been gone to the end zone on that one. Second down, 10, Titusville is at the 45 of Titusville. Again, double-wise both sides for the Rockets. A lot of shifting tonight we haven't seen with Titusville before. Corklin on the counter. Going out yeah, to the right side. It. Carter, yeah. Across the 50, the 45, inside the 45 to about the 40. And that is a good run in there by Zach Carter. And he'll pick up about 12 or so on the play. Take it down inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line of Sagertown. That's the best uh, 
yardage we've had on that play all season. We don't often run it to the uh, wideouts like that. And now we have a timeout on the field. So Sagerton wants to take a timeout with 10.40 left to go, first quarter, no score. We'll be right back. Beyond our industry competitive products and local decision-making capabilities, Farmers National Bank strives to be and do more for our customers and our communities. Unparalleled service and attention to detail with each individual customer is something that is not just a promise, it is an expectation that we embrace. So for all the things that home can mean, we invite our customers, businesses, and communities to come home to Farmers National Bank. Zoom email users. Your email has a great new look and some exciting new features. The enhancements include an improved web interface, more tools to keep you organized, and larger mailboxes. We've even added convenient links to your Facebook and Twitter accounts. The new look and upgraded features are designed to make your internet experience better than ever. For more information, visit armstrongmywire.com. Armstrong, one wire, infinite possibilities. First down and 10, Corklin back to throw, looks down over the middle, he's got, got a man, it's McIntyre, he catches it out at about the uh, 15, down to about the 10 yard line. Nice catch by McIntyre, Skyler McIntyre from his wideout position, uh, came down across the field in a nice throw. Good ball by Titusville. Yeah. This is a good You'll ball see, by yeah, Corklin. He got, he got rid of it, and it's got a little more zing on it this time, and good catch by Skyler. First down and 10, Titusville at the 10 of Segertown. Double wise both sides for the Rockets. The snap, Corklin. Corklin tries to give it up the middle to Lee, and he's going to be hit, and he's going to be dropped for a loss in the play. Back to about the 12, depending on the spot. That went nowhere. I didn't catch uh, the Segertown. I think it was the middle backer that came in and made the initial hit. It looked to me like it might have been Berger. Brings up a second down and a loss of one. Second down and 11. Yeah, it's like you said, Jim, it's a, you know, that belly series. They, they just were not buying it. Split both sides, Titusville. Corklin over the middle. It is complete once again to Zach, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. So Titusville puts the first points on the board. Pass from Titusville, uh, Corklin to Zach Carter, and Titusville gets the first six. Yeah, if you watch it, it, it drops back, and it's just basically a little slant pattern right through the middle. Uh, got what he needed, got in front of his defender, and then was able just to uh, just punch it in the end zone. Jonte will attempt the extra point for Titusville at 9.45, so the Rockets with a nice drive. Mike Gianti with the attempt. There's a snap, placement, kick is up, and the kick is good. 9.45 left to go in the first period. It's Titusville 7, Segretown nothing. We'll be back with the Titusville kickoff right after this message. At Donovan and Bauer Auto Group, we recognize October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Fire Prevention Month. We would like to show our support in the following way. In October, when you purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle from Donovan and Bauer Auto Group, we will donate $50 to either the American Cancer Society or the fire department of your choice. Help us help them find new roads and take the short drive to Donovan and Bauer Auto Group, Route 8 North in Titusville. Fall brings great savings and haunted happenings at the Cranberry Mall. Every Friday and Saturday into the first weekend of November, it's the Dark Domain Haunted House. Plus, get ready for the holidays with great savings throughout the entire mall. That's more like it. Cranberry Mall. That's more like it. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. Gianni to kick it off for Titusville. It's going to be an onside kick. Yeah, can we get it? Oh, it goes out of bounds. Well, we had a good shot at that. We had um, McIntyre coming down the left side, and Gianni kicked it just a little too far. I thought maybe we were going to be able to catch that in the air, but did not, and the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be first down and 10 second time with a short field just inside uh, their side of the 50 at about 47. 
Yeah, to me, it looked like he just kind of overran it a little bit. And, uh, but, uh, boy, that would have been nice, you know, to get the ball back and have, you know, you already got the momentum going on your side. And, uh, you know, that, to be able to get the ball back and, uh, you know, hopefully create another score, or take some more time off. Good day, he under center. The ball's given off to Schultz, first man through. He's out across the 50 inside Titus Terry. Good run down inside the 45 to about the 44 of Titus You talked about Aaron Lee with some power. Mitchell Short, Schultz uh, also with a good drive in there. Yeah, that, uh, that was true. He had, you know, he could have been stopped, you know, a few yards back in there. He probably just on, you know, pure will ground out another four or five yards out of that. Nishnet comes... Uh, Wide to the right, slot man in motion. The ball is given off once again to Schultz, but he's met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. That time, nothing on the right side of the the line. Looked like, uh, I think that was Austin Christie that was on the uh, tackle. Brings up a third a loss of maybe one on the play. 8.57 left in the first quarter if you just joined us. This will seven, Segertown nothing. Double uh, single wing now to the left. The wingman comes in motion. That's Taylor. The ball's given off. Taylor whistle, and I believe we had Secretan's calling offside Titusville. Let's see what the officials are calling. And Secretan coaches are right. Titusville jumped the gun, so that'll bring up a first down by way of the penalty. It'll be first down and 10. Secretan, the ball is marched down to the Titusville 40 yard line. So there's those mistakes, those mental mistakes we talked about. That's uh, I was just going to bring that up, Jim. You know, I mean, those are the little penalties that will kill you eventually. <laughs> Nishnet comes wide to the right. The backs now will be split behind Kudehi. Now Segretown is going to switch to a single to the wing to the right. That would be Taylor on the snap. The ball's getting off the first man through. Drives inside the 40 to about the 37. And that will be Schultz once again. Looks like Hogue was in there on the stop. Pick up of a couple on the play. Yeah, give him two. It'd be like a second yeah. down and eight. Bernardo goes wide to the left. Taylor in the wing right. Taylor in motion. Ball's given off to Taylor going across the left side and staying home this time. And bringing him down. And there's fumble. a fumble on the play. Yeah, they may say he was down. Signs made the initial hit. And they said he was down. A good job by Cody Sines staying yeah, home in that counter. You can see it. Uh, he comes in and he just stayed right in the gap where he was supposed to be, uh, not you know not getting uh, flushed out of there like you know that what happened in Grove City. Rhodes goes wide left now. Taylor in the wing right. Ball's given off to Taylor coming up across the left side. And it's uh, Fesner, excuse me, and Fesner is brought down inside the, right around the 35 of Titus. So he'll pick up of about. Two on the play. I think that was uh, Jason Oaks that was down there on the tackle. And this will bring up a fourth down play now for Segertown. It'll be fourth down and about five. Ball spotted at the Titusville 35 yard line. So we'll see what Segertown does this time. They'll send Bernardo wide to the left. Taylor will be in the wing right. Backs are split. Hudehi under center. Today he's going to roll to his left, looking to throw. Still rolling. He's got the corner. No, Cody Sines is out there. there. Sines is going to make the stop. And then some of the Titusville boys come over and finish off the tackle. But uh, Cody Sines once again with a good defensive play on that right side. Yeah, he, they were sending a, uh, a receiver down that left side, and he was uh, pretty well covered. I mean, he had no chance to get the ball loose down there. His only chance was to turn and to try and make it upfield. And uh, Cody and uh, was right there to meet him. There's a whole host of other ones. <laughs> So Tassel takes over on downs. First down and 10. The ball will be at their own 34-yard line. Tassel will go back to their doubles both sides. Now they make the shift. They'll go trips to the right. As Cody Sine goes over and they stack up on the right side. Cork on out of the shotgun. On the counter to Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee wants to cut up field, and he does. Out across the 35, the 40 to the 42-yard line. You know, it's sort of a delayed counter there. Yeah, I was kind of uh, surprised he got as many yards out of that as he did. They yeah, missed a tackle yeah. there, as you can see. Yeah. Yeah, they had a chance at him in the backfield. Yeah, spots a hole and then just gets right up there and 
Gets about eight big yards, it looks like. Second down, two. Tyson once again shifting. Carter goes into the backfield now with Lee, and he'll be split. We have a wing right, strong side right, Titusville. And it is Corklin on the keeper. Corklin takes it out across the 45 to the 46. It'll be enough for the first down. It'll be at the yeah. Titusville 46-yard uh, line. Yeah, he just, you know, just a straight dive right upside the three-hole. You know, it's a quarterback keeper, but, I mean, he obviously saw something there on that side because somebody was not covering on the uh, well, you're also well, running off of a 265-pound guard. Yeah, that's also a big help. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a very big help. Yeah, too. I think that's a choice I'd have made, too. Doubles both sides. Now Tyus will, will stay in the shotgun. Corkin dropping back to throw, looking for Chase Ackerman, and now he's going to roll to his right. He's got room to run if he wants to pull it down. Now he gets rid of it to Chase Ackerman over the 40-yard line, and it's over his head out of bounds. Incomplete, bringing up a second down 10. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he kept rolling. Uh, he could have turned it up, but I don't think he would have gotten much positive out of it. I think, um, you know, it looked like Ackerman was open there on the outside, and uh, he just kind of missed him. Titus will once again double wise both sides. Now they'll sh shift with a wing. Cody signs. Off the right side. Gets a good block. Cuts up field nice to 50. Block. Goes nice back block. to the outside to 45 and knocked down at about the 40-yard line. Got a good block over there. Um, able to kick it outside. Picks up enough for the first down down around the 39-yard line of Segertown. Yeah, and if I was looking right, I'm trying to see who the guard was. I think it was Christie that was pulling yeah, him and, and Oaks. And Oaks. Yeah, they had both guards pulling on the play. Christie with a nice block. Cody was able to follow it. And then there, uh, Austin gets in the play again there. And because of that, he was able to gain about an extra five to seven yards out of that. Titus with the first down and ten. Corkin looking to throw. Down over the middle. Thrown deep, and it is incomplete. Down around the ten-yard line. Threw into a crowd back there. There's two Rockets and uh, two Panthers. Yeah. That ball could have gone either way. Second down ten, Titusville. Had good coverage Oops. by Segertown in this play. Yeah, they had it, uh, and he had position on him. 5-11 left to go here in the first quarter. 7-0 Titusville. Titusville on their second offensive series. Second down and 10. The ball is at the Panther 37-yard line. Lamey comes wide to the left. McIntyre's in the slot left. Got doubles to the other side also. Corkin, again, looking to throw. Corkin's going to go deep once again over the middle. And, oh, in and out oh. of the hands of... Now we have a flag down. We yeah. may have uh, interference. Uh, Jim, I was just going to say that. Ed, I hope they show it again. It, it looks like he kind of grabbed him a little bit before as he was diving. Yeah, he, was not, he was not going for the ball. He was obviously going for the player. The pass was incomplete. It was off the hands, but it will be a penalty on Segertown. And that's a spot penalty. On the line of scrimmage here, you can see it again. You'll, you'll notice the uh, contact here as the ball Good. comes downfield. Yeah, and see, so there he had a little bit early. Yeah. So it's a first down and 10 times so by way of the penalty at 5.05 left in the first. The ball is spotted at the uh, about the 24 yard line of Segertown. Titus now shifts, brings three to the left. Corklin. Out of the shotgun. Gives it, uh, gives it off to Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee busts off the right side. Still on his feet. Driving straight ahead. He's going to pick up about eight or so on the play before he's brought down. And he'll be brought down inside the 20, right around the 16-yard line. It was a good second effort once again by Lee. And uh, one of the things Titusville is able to do is they are able to establish a running game now. Makes a big difference in your passing game, doesn't it? Yeah. Doubles both sides again for Titusville. Now Tyson will shift with three left, and we have a whistle and a timeout. It will be a timeout called with 4.34 to go. First quarter, 7-0 Tyson on top. Tyson will driving. We'll be back right after this message. Hi, I'm Phyllis Rapp, owner-designer here at Acorn Acres Floral Design. Acorn Acres has been voted best florist in the oil region for the past six years. Each design is created with the recipient in mind. Stop out or give us a call at 814-657-8599. 
For funeral, weddings, or everyday arrangements, contact us here at Acorn Acres Floral Design. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. 434 left to go first quarter. The score is Titusville 7, Segertown nothing, and Titusville is driving. The ball is down at the 15-yard uh, line of Segertown where Titusville will have a second down and two. So, so far, Mike, a, a kind of a good uh, blend of passing running for Titusville. Both of them working pretty well. Yeah, and as you alluded to earlier, Jim, you know, it's a lot easier to uh, pass the ball when you establish a running game. Yeah, they <laughs> I, can't come at you quite so quick. Yeah. you got to stay at home and you got to be honest. Titusville now comes out of the ball again, the standard formation, double rights and double left. Now he's going to go trips to the right side. His card is now checked that's going to line up in the backfield with Aaron Lee. Under center is Corklin, and Segertown jumps. So Segertown will come into the neutral zone. That'll be five against them, and we'll put the ball in a first down situation for Titusville inside the uh, 15. <laughs> and it'll be real close to the 10, probably about the 11. Now we'll see what Coach Hancock dials up. Brown and Carter come to the left. I believe it's Signs and Gianti to the right. Now they're going to send, no, it's Chase Ackerman. He comes to the left side. They, wow, they trip up way off to the left. Corklin under center. Corklin gives it off to Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee straight up the gut, still driving, brought down. Inside the five, a good tackle out there by Austin Rhodes of Segertown. But deep into the uh, red zone now, Titusville with the uh, drive down around the five-yard line. So it'll be second down and five from the five. It looks like uh, the stakes are still up, so it looks like we might be able to get a first down about a half a yard from the goal line. Titusville now will go to a uh, wing to the left. And now double wing as they move Gianti to the right. On the counter, the ball is given off to Cody Sines. We have a hold. Sines takes it in yep. for the touchdown, but it's coming back. Daggummit. That was a good, good play by Tyus, a good design play. But uh, unfortunately, it's going to come back on the hold on Titusville. So take the points off the board and move it back. Trying to see. Here comes a handoff. Right there, 70. 70. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's too bad. That cost Titusville that time, but uh, that happens. That's Wade Harger, who is the uh, tackle for Titusville. Called on the hold. That happens. So now it brings up a second down and 15 for Titusville. Double both sides again for the Rockets. Now we shift. And we're going to go tight trips to the left now for the Rockets. A lot of movement on this offense in the shifts. Corkland missed the handoff, and he's going to be caught in the backfield and thrown for loss, clear back at the 20. I think that play was designed to come to the left to Gianti, and somehow he and uh, Aaron Lee, somebody in the backfield, missed connections there. I see Aaron Lee talking to Brady Corkland, so it must have been the two of them messed up somehow in that play. Yeah, something, yeah, because you can, you can tell he didn't take the handoff, and I don't know, you know how the, uh, the play calling system works. But to me, it looked like they were setting up for a reverse or something. You know, if you got trips to that side. Titus comes out now with doubles both ways. Now we're going to stack them again on the left side. Check that. We're just going to have three wideouts to the left side. 3.09 left to go in the first quarter. Third down and 20 for Titusville. Corklin's rolling to his left. Still rolling. Still rolling. Pulls it down. He's going to run it up the side. Good spin. He's going to be brought down at about the, eh, it looks like about the 13 or so, 14-yard line. So to bring up a fourth down situation for Titusville. Yeah, those are the mistakes that we alluded to in our pregame, uh, Mike. The penalties and uh, uh, miscommunication and uh, those kinds of mistakes. Stall a drive very quickly. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, Cody was in for the touchdown. There was a hold there. You know. Uh, then a miss handoff. Uh, yeah. 2.30 left to go here in the first. Titusville now with a fourth down from the 13-yard line. Doubles to the left. Wide side of the field will be to Titusville's right. 
that could have an effect in terms of uh, Brady Corklin's speed. Tyus is going to trip him up now over on the right side. Wide to the right. Corklin's going to look to the right. Corklin's still looking. Throws over the middle. It is to Aaron Lee. It is complete, but it's not going to be enough to take it into the end zone. It's down close about the two-yard line, but uh, that's not going to get it done. And I believe now Segertown will take it over. First down and 10, but it'll be inside their five-yard line. Good completion, just unable to shake the tackle. Segertown holds. Tyusville comes out on defense. Segertown with the ball first down and 10 at their two. Yeah, that was a Gianti, actually. Oh, Gianti? That's yeah. A, that's why I saw the seven. That's good for an old guy. There you have. That's a start, Jim. You're doing good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who was on the left side that went down the middle. If Brady would have seen him, it would, it would have been an easy seven. But, uh, yeah, the replay didn't show on that one. But, uh, yeah, but that was Gianti. Well, Segertown has it first down and ten. They'll start at their own two. They're going to keep the ends in tight. Now they got uh, uh I believe it's Taylor on the wing right. He goes in motion to the left. The ball is handed off to the first man through. He's going to be hit and dropped as he comes out across the about the three-yard line. That was uh, Fetzner on the carry for Segertown. Brings up a second down eight. That'll make it second down nine. Almost no gain now as we see them move the marker. Dane Rhodes brings in the next play from Coach Rhodes. Kurdehi brings the team out over the ball. Regal will be in the slot, or the wing left. He comes in motion to the right. He gets the ball to the right, coming out the right side. He's out across the five, breaks one tackle, runs past, but he gets it out close to the 10-yard line. It won't be, might be enough for a first down. We'll have to wait and see where the spot is. Now it's going to be a little short, about a third down now in two. Yeah, the I ball is spotted right at the 10. Yeah, I think that was Christian Hogue on the tackle, if I'm not mistaken. Christy get over there quite a ways. Yeah. Wide side of the field will be to the left for Segertown as they're running from our left to right. 52 seconds left in the first quarter. 7-0 Titusville. Titusville had one touchdown called back and then unable to uh, pick it up a second time through. Nishnek comes wide to the right. In the slot right will be Taylor. Single back. Today he wants to throw. He does. It's up to the 15, and the tackle is missed. Now we pick him up as Nishtek brings it out across to the 20-yard line. Enough for the first down. So it'll be a first down and 10 Segertown. They bounce it out to their 20. So starting at the 2-yard line, the Panthers able to push it out now where they get a first down and 10 at their 20-yard line with 30 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, it, just a, you know, it, it was a little out pattern. Just missed the tackle on that, and that allowed him to get enough for the first down. I think he might have, you know, it would have been close anyway. But Bernardo comes wide to the right. The backs are split. Now, Crude, he gives it off to the second man through, and he is going to come out across the 20 to about the 21. Yeah, Oaks on the tackle there. As time is going to run out. So the first quarter is going to come to an end with the score Titusville 7, the Panthers 0. We'll be back with more Rocket Panther action right after this. Big G Tire and Auto on the High Town Road in Titusville is your home to the largest selection of tires for small compact cars to large semis. Need an oil change, inspection, or repair? Big G can service your vehicle while it's in the shop. Protect your vehicle with our fluid film undercoating to keep the rust at bay. Big G will keep you on the road. Tires for any size vehicle and auto repair. Come see us at Big G Tire and Auto on Hyde Town Road in Titusville. Lugio Graphics is ready to help you with all of your screen printing and embroidery projects. They can take orders for as few as six pieces to thousands of pieces for your club, special event, business, family reunion, or just your group of friends. Lugio Graphics can custom design the artwork for you or use your own design or creative ideas to come up with great looking apparel. 1-800-645-7430 or stop by our shop and talk to our experts about your upcoming project. Lugio Graphics for all your custom screen printing and embroidery needs. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. Kudahi gives it off on the counter to the right side. Titusville, again, not being fooled by the counter with the second down and eight, and it'll bring up a third down situation for Sagertown. 
I'm, so, sure, I'm sure they watched a lot of film. I think uh, we probably yeah. talked about this a few times, didn't we? Yeah. Third down and about seven. Just underway here, second quarter action. Because we certainly didn't watch any film during our production <laughs> meeting. <laughs> yeah, well. What, what, what actually, exactly did we do in that three-hour production meeting? I had cookies. I don't know what you guys did. <laughs> Bernardo comes uh, wide to the right. We check that wide to the left. They have a wing now in motion as Taylor. Kudur, he now is going to throw the ass. Oh, just overthrows his man. And that would be uh, Fetzner out of about the 25. Just overthrows him. Brings up a fourth down situation. I had to check. I couldn't remember if that was third or fourth. Yeah, the mine's the first to go, Luke. Yeah, and yours went a long time ago, Jim. <laughs> you just opened that one wide uh, open. Yeah, thanks a lot. He <laughs> jumped notice, off. notice tonight he had the punchline. I, I, I held did. off from that. I, I did that. <laughs> but now to do the kicking for Segretown on the fourth down. Corklin back for Titusville. Good snap. Oh, it might be blocked. No. Ooh. Short kick. And it's going to hit at the 40 and roll. Oh, and roll at the 43-yard uh, line. I thought Corkin faked me out. I thought he was going to run up here and pick that thing. What are you doing, son? And uh, he just ran past the ball. So the ball rolls dead at the 43-yard line of Segretown. That's where Titus will we'll put it in play with 10.59 left to go in the first half. Titus will leading 7 nothing. And I just wanted to say I'm glad you asked earlier about that seven-second delay because <laughs> I, if Corklin would have picked that up, <laughs> you would have been using it. <laughs> no, nah, I'd have been fine with it. I'd have just been down there kicking on the little boy. <laughs> Well, I knew he knew better than that. I hope he knows better than that. Oh, he did. He didn't touch it. And now we have a whistle and a timeout. I believe we do. Segretown is going to take a timeout. So Segretown saw something they didn't like, and they want to take a timeout. 10.59 to go in the first half. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with the Tassel's first down and 10 possession at the 43 of Segretown. Titusville Chiropractor Adam Middleton welcomes you to the Titusville office of Middleton Chiropractic. Dr. Middleton is committed to improving the function of your nervous system so that you can have a higher quality of life. Through their office, you'll receive the best care through the use of modern chiropractic techniques and technology. Call us today and we can develop a chiropractic plan specific for you. 827-9970 or visit our website for more information. Middleton Chiropractic, your chiropractor in Titusville. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. 10.59 left in the first half of play. Titusville leading 7 to nothing. Titusville had one touchdown called back on a holding call. And uh, Segretown with a good drive out of their two-yard line, out of their deep end. Uh, but now they have uh, put Titusville in a position where it's first down and 10 at Segretown 43. Corkland has uh, doubles both sides of the field. Now we're going to stack again to the left side. We stack him in tight. Corklin out of the shotgun. Carter comes in motion to the right. And the ball is handed off to Aaron Lee to the left. Aaron's out across the 25, the 30. He's down inside the 20. And, and he's, he's going to go in for the touchdown. And, and I no, don't, is there a no flag? flag? I no, don't, no don't flags. see any laundry. So touchdown, Titusville. Aaron Lee, 43 yards for the score on the counter. So the counter worked for Titusville that time. Yeah, for once it actually worked for us, and you can see got some uh, good blocking, good blocking from too. Christy. Um, Cody Signs there got uh, in his man's way, and that's just all it needed for uh, for Aaron to explode on the play. And, like and said, now we're 40, bringing it 43 yards. Now we're bringing it back. There was a flag in the play. I thought I saw a flag come out. Second touchdown call back. Let's see what the call. It's holding oh, once again good. on Titusville. I thought I saw a flag come out, and then I saw no motion out there. Well, I was looking. I didn't see anything anywhere. So that's the second time Tyson has a touchdown called back, and that now brings the ball big change in play because the ball now comes back out to the Segretown 46, 47-yard line. So Tyson puts it in play now. First down and about 15. Jaunty wide left. And it is Cody Sines coming across the right side, turns it up field. He's going to pick up uh, eh, probably nothing on the play. If you, best a yard. Tell you what, he got met by a few people, but he delivered a good pop too. Uh, if you saw it from up here. 
Second down for Titusville. 10.30 left in the first half. Ball is at the 47 of Segertown. Titus will send doubles to the left. Brown wide left. We have doubles right. We'll stay that way. No shift. Corkin looking to throw. Still looking. Throws over the middle. Wide open. Brown. Oh, in. Oh. He loses it. Bernardo comes up. Makes a nice hit. Oh, now oh. they're going to call. Oh, now they got. They're going to call him for unnecessary sure. roughness. I'm not sure I agree with this one. I thought it was a good play by Bernardo. We'll see what happens here uh, with the call. It'll be a personal foul, unnecessary roughness. If it stands, the officials are talking about it out here at the 40-yard line. And it is personal foul against Bernardo. And we can see it again see, here in the yeah. replay. Yeah. It would have to be a helmet-to-helmet -helmet kind of a thing. Yeah, there's a knee to the helmet. I'm not sure that that's. I'm not sure that's a call I agree with. If I'm the coaching staff of Segretown, and they're still discussing it down here, I, now they're going to step it off. So, yeah, unless, certainly unless one you want to talk some, to the referee about. Unless there's some change in the rule, I didn't see anything wrong with it personally. I thought it was just good football play. But we already con condemned my eyes earlier, so I have been. 10 4 left to go we in talk the half. About, we talk about the emotion of the players before the game. Obviously, the coaches have a huge emotional ride. They've been on this season, both sides. Trips wide to the left for Titusville. Gianti wide right. Wide side of the field will be to Titusville's left, should they choose to go that way. They do not. They give it to Aaron Lee coming across the right side. He's going to cut it upfield. He's still upfield across the 15 to 10. Stays in bounds, and he's in for the touchdown. That was a good run by Aaron Lee. That was a great run. Yeah, very nice run, able to stay in bounds. You know, one of the things I thought about the last couple of weeks with Lee, we know that um, he's a heck of a wrestler. He wrestles at 160. You watch him going down here, the, the what do you say, the balance that it takes to wrestle, the balance it takes to run that in, as you can see him tiptoeing down that sideline, did a great job of staying in and getting the score. So Titus will put this one on the board, and it is not called back. Did the Steelers have a play just like that on Sunday that was called back? About everything they do is called back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Just, I thought I'd get some support even from Kevin and you know, like a head <laughs> nod or something here, Kevin. Was, Give me, <laughs> help me out here. <laughs> yes, there was a play Sunday. <clears throat> I, I didn't watch the game, so. Yeah. Okay, so we get back to football here. Jason Ackerman will hold, and Gianti will get <laughs> the extra point. Oh, my. Snap, placement, the kick is up, and the kick looks good from here. 14-0, Titus will 9.54 left to go in the first half. Go ahead and rock the kickoff right after this. I love Titusville Area Hospital because it's a small hospital. The last two quarterly reports, Titusville has been in the top five community hospitals and patient satisfaction in the state of Pennsylvania. I think patients are given the opportunity to be cared for right at home rather than having to travel. Everything's contained right here. Being part of the community and knowing the community makes me do a much better job. We already have a personal aspect with them. I think this little hospital is a perfect thing for this little city. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. Nine fifty-four left to go here in the first half of play. Fourteen nothing, Titusville. Aaron Lee with a forty-three-yard run and uh, puts Titusville up by two scores. And uh, that was after a major penalty uh, on Titusville, the second holding call on Titusville, and that was the second touchdown called back by Titusville. So uh, the Rockets persevered and came through and were able then to uh, put the ball in from forty-three yards out with Lee. Good yeah, offensive uh, series, Mike. Yeah, and I think. Uh, Coach Hancock will probably uh, forgive him for that penalty <laughs> since they scored on that one. I've been, been impressed with Tesla's time of possession so far in this, uh, not only the first quarter, but part of the second quarter. Well, when you move the ball on offense, it usually tends to to yeah. help that. Yeah, it does a lot. Gianti uh, is going to set the ball up on the wide side of the field to the right on the right hash mark. And uh, we'll see if Tesla tried an onside kick last time. And he tries it again this time, and it's going down the right side. Tysel has a shot at it, and, and Tysel has, has it. it. I think they got it, yeah. They do have it, and it's right around the 41-yard line. Wow. 
think uh, this time 20, moved, 21, I think, is who got yeah, it. Yeah, it was McIntyre. Skyler McIntyre. Yeah, Skyler McIntyre again. He almost had the last one. Yeah, and see here, he gets a high enough bounce on it now to where he can run under it. He doesn't, you know, overrun it like he did the last time. Made sure he had control of the ball and just uh, went down with it. So it's a first down and 10. Titus on the onside kick. It's at the uh, 30. Check that at the 42-yard line of Segertown. Double wise both sides again for Titusville. We always start out this way. See if they shift again. Corklin out of shotgun. Stay there. Corklin looking to throw. Corklin's going to pull it down. Quarterback draw. Corklin out across. He's got a broken he's, field. He's, he's the broken. 30 he's wide and open. He's gone. Corklin in for the touchdown. If there's no flags on the quarterback draw and uh, right up the gut at 9:42. And Corklin takes it in from 42 yards out. Two big plays for Titusville back and once, to back. And once again, if you take a look at this, uh, you'll just see the explosive speed he got. He'll, he'll turn it on. He sees the opening. And then about right there. Well, you know, we were just talking. Turns on, uh, the, turns on the afterburns. He it, has to be the fastest on the team, I'd say. We were talking in our <clears throat> production meeting. Uh, that if Corkin got loose, that would be uh, one of the positives for Tyson because we, we said he probably has the best speed out of the field. Tyson with the extra point attempt, Ackerman to hold. Good snap, kick is up, and the kick is good. 9.42 to go in the first half. Titusville 21, Segertown 0. We'll be back with the Rocket kickoff right after this. Armstrong's Value Pack brings you more of the kids programming your family wants. Sprout Signature, The Good Night Show, tucks your preschooler in every night. Look to The Hub for Goosebumps, Fraggle Rock, and a new season of Family Game Night. And Boomerang has all our favorite classic cartoons for the kid and everyone. Nick Jr. and Nick Teen, Disney Jr. and Disney XD. Call today and add these great channels and more. Armstrong, one wire, infinite possibilities. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. 9.42 left to go in the first half of play. Titusville with back-to-back -back scores. Uh, that one came by way of an onside kick that uh, Skyler McIntyre recovered at the 43 of Sigertown. And on one play, Corkland 43 yards up the gut. And Titusville up 21-0. Jonty now will tee it up again on the right hash mark. <laughs> Well, will we kick it deep? Bernardo standing back at about his uh, eight yard line. Mike's got a pretty good leg. And he does, he kicks it down the right side and it is taken at about the 37 and out to the 40. And that's about as far as you're gonna get as Easton Hogue is there to make the stop for Titusville. So it'll be first down and 10 at the 40 yard line for Sigertown. You know, one of the things I uh, thought I'd bring up too, uh, while we got a little bit here, uh, number of fans uh, from Titusville came all this way. I'm looking across. Uh, Actually, it's a, nice, a quick trip over. Yeah, nice little, yeah. nice little turnout, and uh, obviously the Sager Town side with homecoming and all that. Uh, they've got a very good crowd here tonight. Kudehi wanting to throw, he's rolling to his right, check to his left. He's being traced, and now he's going to throw it out of bounds as he is throwing it upfield towards uh, his back, and that would be Mitchell Schultz. Uh, Pass was a little bit short. It looked like he had uh, Cody Sines and uh, Skyler McIntyre. Yeah, he had some white shirts chasing him there. He had to get rid of it. Bring up a second down in 10. The ball is again at the 40-yard line of Segertown. This time, wide to the left will be Nishnek. And it'll be a wing to the right. And now a timeout, Titusville. So Titusville wants to take a timeout and uh, talk things over. With 9.27 to go in the first half of play, 21-0 Titusville. Stay with us. Beyond our industry competitive products and local decision-making capabilities, Farmers National Bank strives to be and do more for our customers and our communities. Unparalleled service and attention to detail with each individual customer is something that is not just a promise, it is an expectation that we embrace. So for all the things that home can mean, we invite our customers, businesses, and communities to come home to Farmers National Bank. 
Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. 9.27 left to go first half, 21-0 Titus. You know, Mike, we talked about emotion, and uh, we thought the team to get off to the best start here probably was going to hold themselves in a good, good stead to pick up the win, and Titusville has been able to do that this evening. Yeah, and that's true. I think, you know, one of the things when they got the opening kickoff and, you know, took it the length of the, or, you know, not the length of the field, but obviously scored on the first drive. Taylor coming across oh. left side. He breaks one tackle, breaks through, and almost broke another one at the 50-yard line. Close to a first down. Yeah, nice run. Good blocking on the left side of the offensive line for uh, Segertown. But, yeah, I think the, the emotion had a lot to play with it. And so got the start and able to uh, keep it going. Yeah, they had a couple. He had a couple good blockers out there uh, pulling down the line for him. And Titus Phil Oaks and a couple other people missed him before he was finally brought down. Backs now are split for Segretown. Kadahi under center. Kadahi going to his right, gives the ball off to Fitzner. Fitzner trying to get out across the 50. He does inside Titus Phil territory. It's now Segretown trying to go wide on Titus twice in a row and has uh, had some success with that. Enough for the first down with the ball inside the 50 to about the 47, where Panthers will have a first down and 10. That'll be the Titus of 47. 8.43 left the first half. Segretown now out of the huddle. They'll put Fetzner in the wing. Now he'll go to the right side. Backs are split. Ball is given off to the first man through and almost broke it through on the counter. And I see who that, yes, that was uh, Taylor. Coming off the wing spot, almost broke it. Yeah, uh, looks like it was Daniel Stearns that was on the tackle. Came through that way. Yeah, yeah where's Stearns. Stearns? Yeah, it was a good hit by Stearns. It was a good hit, and the thing was, if Dan wouldn't have been there, it's like you said, it yeah. would have been. Six on the board. Yeah. Second down nine. Eight minutes left in the half. Back stay split. Now they switched, and they'll put Fetzner in the wing left. Cordell, he rolling to his left, wants to come outside and overthrows his receiver. That would be Casey Fetzner. And that uh, will bring up a third down in nine. Ball is at the uh, Titusville 47-yard line. Yeah, big defensive series here for uh, Titusville. They need, uh, if they could get a, a situation, I don't know if Sagertown would go for it. They probably would. But uh, if they can third get and the long ball. Now. Yeah, if yeah. they can get them fourth and long. Segretown will send a wide out to the right. The ball is given off to the first man across the left side. Fessner breaks it out inside, and he's going to have enough of the first down. Nice run, good play on the right side. He's going to take it down inside to 35 as uh, he'll bring up enough for the first down. First down and 10 at the Titusville 35 yard line. And once again, they found the outside. They're getting a lot of they're pulling a tackle. They're getting a lot yeah. of guard, a lot of blocking downfield. Yeah, number 75 leading yeah, the way, nice and block. he took, yeah, he. Uh, Trying to think who he or see who he took out over there, but uh, really that was the block that kind of sprung him. First down and ten. <laughs> Under center, pitch back. It comes to Fetchner, and he's not going to get anywhere as they tried a quick pitch to their left, and uh, nowhere is Jason Oaks makes a stop for Titusville. Maybe a loss of one on the play. Bring up a second down and eleven. Seven ten left to go. First half. Titusville 21, the Panthers nothing, but the Panthers on a good drive this time. Some out of the huddle. Rhodes will go wide to the right. The backs are going to be split. They have a wing right. Ball's given off to Fester, going to his right. Nice block on the outside, cuts it upfield, and is going to drive ahead to about the 30 to the 29-yard line. Well, that was a nice block on the outside. That's all it took. All he had to do was turn it in from there. Yeah, he read that one well. He just cuts right off the block. Yeah, 32 was uh, the blocker. Yeah, right that there, was, that uh, sprung him. That was probably an extra 8, 10 yards right there. Trey Regal with a good block for Sagertown. Brings up a third down and a four. They're at the title 37. Wide left. Zach Nishnak. In the wing left is Fetzner. Now they shift. And it's going to be Kadah. He wants to come to the outside. He makes one tackle, comes across the 35, the 30, and he's going to be driven out of bounds about the 22-yard line. That'll be enough for the first down on the keeper. Rolling to his left. 
Ryan Kudahi picks up the first down. As you can see, he's just rolling to his left. I'm trying to see who that was. Had a good shot at him and just missed. And then he had the, the entire left side open as nobody contained. 6.02 left to go here. And uh, we had a penalty on the play. I, I'm missing these flags somehow. They ought to make There's them in yellow holding. or something. Yeah. yeah, a holding penalty. They need to make those flags out of yellow or something so I can see them. My goodness. I'll tell you what, that was a big break, though, for Titus. So yeah, that was a that good run. I didn't see the roll on the replay either, though. Oh, well, third down and uh, 15 now. Back at the 41 of Titusville. Wide to the left, Henry. Now the ball is given off to Taylor. Taylor tries to cut up field, and he's going to be hit by Ackerman and dropped at about the 32-yard line. Pick up about five or six on the play. And uh, that'll bring up a fourth down play for Sager Town. And Titusville wants to take a timeout. 5.31 left to go here in the first half. 21-0 Titusville, but Sager Town with a good offensive series. They're charging in towards that Titusville goal. We'll be back, see what they can do here on a fourth down call in just one minute. Stay with us. Colonial Machine Company in Pleasantville is a proud supporter of the Titusville Rockets. The Colonial Machine Company takes pride in their products, working hard to manufacture and supply a quality product that's priced right and made right here in the USA. The Colonial Machine Company would like to wish the Rocket athletes best of luck on and off the field and remind you that you are a product of your school and the community. So continue to work hard, play hard, and maintain the quality of excellence that Rocket fans have come to expect. Go Rockets from the Colonial Machine Company in Pleasantville. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. 5.31 left to go in the first half. It is a situation where it's fourth down and seven for Sagertown. They're at the Titusville 32-yard line. Uh, had a really good first down picked up, but then they get penalized for the hold. And so uh, the ball came back, and it set them up now in a fourth and long. So we'll see what they can call here out of the timeout. They're going to send Berger wide to the left. They're going to throw deep. Got a man deep, and Ackerman's going to knock it down. That's a good play by Ackerman. Had an opportunity to intercept that, but instead knocked it down because it's a fourth down play. Tyus will take over first down and 10, as opposed to being inside the five. Yeah, that's what I mean. If he intercepted and get tackled down there, you know, instead just knock it down. Get the ball out here. I'm sure during that timeout that the Tyus coaching staff said, don't let anybody behind you tendency that we think, have to do. I think that uh, might have been part of the conversation. Double wise out for Titusville, both sides. In motion, Carter. Now they're going to stack on the left side. Corklin with the ball. Corklin gives it off to Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee wants to cut it upfield, wants to cut back. Now he's going to drive ahead, pick up a few on the play. He takes that across the 35. And Tommy drives out to about the 37. Pick up of about four in a play or so. Yeah, and he earned those four yards. Yeah, he worked hard for those. So to bring up a uh, second down and uh, yeah, about uh, six, maybe five for Titusville. 4.55 left to go in the half. Quickly Titusville out over the ball. Again, double wide left and right for the Rockets. Now they move Ackerman <coughs> into tight end. On the counter, no, Corkin's going to keep. He's going to roll to his left. Got to get a block. Out across the 40, the 45. He has a first down driven out of bounds on the Titusville side at about the 46, 46, 47 yard line. I hope we see that again because it looked like he had trouble with the snap and was turning it. I think it was the, uh, it was called the whole time. Yeah, okay, there it is. Yeah, that was a called play. Okay, to me it looked like he was spinning the ball, but obviously, it, it, you know, it wasn't. Need to thank Armstrong for their instant replay for us this evening. Helps tremendously. 4.25 left to go. Titus for now. We'll bring it in. in tight. Have doubles to the left. Jaunty wide to the right. Corkin looking to throw. Corkin looking downfield. Pulls it down. It's going to be chased. Corkin still looking. Pulls it in. He's going to be hit and maybe pick up maybe two on the play. Good coverage downfield by Segertown. Nothing uh, open for Titusville. Yeah, he was looking downfield and there was, there was nothing there. Now they were covered well. 
State inbounds, clock still running, 355. Second down and nine, Titusville at the 47. Doubles again, both sides for the Rockets. Now we're going to shift once again. We're going to go three wide to the right. Corklin at shotgun, dropping back, looking to throw. Got a man coming out and throws over the middle. It is complete to Carter. Carter's got to turn it up field. He does. He's across the uh, 45 to the 43. He'll have enough, maybe down around the, eh, close to the 41 yard line, have enough for a first down. Yeah, he came right across the middle. He was wide open. There's nobody covering him on that one. Just about everything he's thrown tonight has been over the middle. Yeah. There was nobody within three yards of him, probably. First down, 10, Titusville. They're now at the 41 of Segertown. Keeping doubles both sides again. Corklin dropping straight back. Throws down the left side over the middle. It is complete. Nice catch. Brought down at the 20-yard line. And that is Brown, I believe, yeah, with Brown. the reception. Good concentration. Yeah, they were right up he on caught, he caught that. He caught that right in traffic. You know, when you know you're going to get clipped. Be able to hang on to that ball. That's yeah. Good, good catch. First down and 10. Now Titusville, they're driving at the 20-yard line of Segertown. Titusville with doubles both sides. Corklin out of shotgun, as always. Yeah, not always, but 99%. Now Thompson's going to make the shift. They're going to have to hustle. They're going to get a delay of game. Stack him up on the right side wide on trips. Ball's given off to Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee breaks across the 20 and still on his feet, driving to 15, breaks more tackles, down around the 10, inside the 10 to about the 8. Another good run by Aaron Lee. You give him an inch and he takes a mile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he certainly does, Luke. Well, I'll tell you what, if you look at this, let's count the tackles he broke. One, two, three, four. It was five, five six. six. They finally brought him down. Yeah. Titus will now with the ball. Corkin's going to roll to his left. Look it down in the end zone. Has a man there. It is complete for the touchdown. I didn't think we were into the end zone, but we were. And now it is again to Carter. So yeah. Tyson picks up the touchdown on the uh, completion. First goal from the nine-yard line. Corkland to Carter. I couldn't see why Carter rolls. stopped running. Yeah, just rolls to his left. He was just right in the end zone. For some reason, they got the pylons around the outside, too. And that's, a, that's what fools me from up here. <laughs> so Gianti in to attempt the extra point. 27 nothing now, Titusville. Not what I expected here this evening in terms of score. Here's the snap, placement, and the kick is up. The kick is good. Jonte with the extra point. 28-0 Titusville with 2-12 left to go in the first half. We'll be back with the rocket kickoff. Stay right there. A lot more action coming your way. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall in Titusville invite you in to view some of the finest jewelry in Northwest Pennsylvania. Morelli's is also home to unique gifts from area artisans, including chocolates from Roma Lowe of Erie. They also carry an extensive selection of engagement settings and loose diamonds to create the ideal ring for the ideal person. Morelli's also offers jewelry repair, and they buy gold and silver. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall, Titusville. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. You know, it's kind of scary. You guys are sitting up here in the booth and watching. We've got uh, Armstrong running some really good replays for us, which is really helpful. Uh, they need to run the replay before the play so that I can tell what's going on. Because uh, Tim Snyder's standing behind me. He's allowed to pick me up and take me home. You know what he does for a living. So uh, I thought uh, I couldn't figure out why Zach didn't turn and run. He's caught the ball. Yeah, he's in the end zone. Oh, well, we're here to have fun. 21, 28 nothing Titus with 2-12 left to go in the half. Jonte at the right hash mark with a tee up. And he kicks it again to the right side. And Schultz takes it on a fair catch. And that will be at about the 32. Yeah, about the 32-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 there for the Panthers. And we'll spot it. I think it'll be about the 31-32. We'll see once the ball is put in play. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go about the 32. And now they say the 33, 33 on the clock. That's okay. 212. 
as Sagertown out over the ball. Bernardo will go wide to the right. Fetzner will stay in the wing left. Now they make the shift to the right. The ball is handed off to the first man through. I believe that's Schultz. We'll see what number he gets up. Regal. No, Regal. Picks up about uh, six on the play. Regal is a junior, 5'11", 190-pound back. Second down and uh, looks like about four. Wide to the left comes Zach Nishnak. Fetzner now will shift into the backfield. Taylor on the wing right. Taylor comes in motion. Good day. Oh, almost intercepted oh. by Titusville. Uh, is out there. That looked like uh, it was a lineman. It was. Uh, it was Christy. Christy. <laughs> Austin Christy almost had himself a pick at about the uh, 36 yard line. Yeah, it was a, I think it was a little bit of a screen, and they were not falling for it. Oh, well. <laughs> AJ's out there kind of mad at himself. He had a chance to get his name in the offensive side of the ledger. 134 left in the first half. Third down for the Panthers. I know last year he returned that fumble back and came close. He was uh, very disappointed that he didn't make the end zone. <laughs> Throws wide left. Quarterback looking to roll. He's got some men after him. He's going to be hit and dropped way back at about the 25-yard line. And uh, that will be Oaks. And um, shirts are getting dirty. Can't see numbers. But it will be Jason yeah, we're Oaks. Gonna, yeah, we'll see here. Cody. Signs in good in good pursuit, and I think he turned him in. I think it was Oaks and Christie. Yeah, Oaks and Christie. So about 400 pounds chasing you down. Brings up a fourth down and a bundle, about yeah. 19. Over 400 pounds and two guys that can lift buses. <coughs> Titus will now will go back with in the punt formation as the uh, Panthers are going to do the. Kicking Cole is standing back at about midfield for Titusville. Bernardo to do the uh, kicking for Segretown, who almost a bad snap, almost a block kick. We have a flag roughing the pass or the kicker, kicker. straight up in the air, and the ball is going to roll dead with uh, back at about the uh, 20 yard line, but it won't make any difference. Now, if it's roughing the kicker or running into the kicker, I'm not sure in high school ball how that's called. Running one's in? five, one's 15. 15 yeah. Uh, but either way, it could still be a fourth down, <coughs> unless it's an automatic first down. I think if it's a- Did you bring my rule book? If it's roughing, <laughs> I believe it is a first day. You know, it's an automatic one. If it's just running into the kicker. No, how's that work? Okay, now the signal was uh, roughing the kicker. <laughs> penalty is declined. Uh, and it was on Titusville. How can Titusville decline the penalty? Hmm. Now that one would take a little bit of an explanation on my part. So Titusville is going to get the ball first down at 10. Wow. I'm not sure what that call is. We're going to have to ask an official about that one. Titusville first down. Got threes to the right for Tysel. Got in the snap. The ball is given off to Lee. Lee cuts it back up the middle, cuts to the outside. He's going to drive down inside close to the 15. A lot of the fans want to know what the call is. I do too. Uh, that's yeah, one I mean, absolutely I don't, I don't, don't blame understand. him for that one. It was roughing the kicker, but it was declined. I can't believe Secretan would decline it. And Thomas was going to take a timeout, and the coach wants a little explanation, I would think. Let's just keep it here. Yeah, I, that's yeah. a very unusual situation because it was definitely a penalty on Titusville, and uh, Titusville would have no uh, – uh, Segretown just would not uh, – Hand the ball over. What, you, no, you wouldn't decline it. You would uh, take the 5, 10, or 15, whatever the penalty is, at least re-kick it. Uh, I don't understand uh, the call at all. I know the coaches are talking to the officials out there, and uh, – I would like an explanation myself. That's, that's very, very unusual to have something like that. I, I can't believe it's the coaching staff at Segretown wouldn't decline that. Obviously, they didn't. They wouldn't be out there arguing. So, yeah, and I mean, you know, it wasn't like he didn't make the call. He made the call. You know. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, the, the signal from the officials was roughing the kicker. We saw it. I mean, and we saw the play. And uh, 
I'm not real sure what in the world is What's going on. Just it to me. And the uh, coaching staff, the coach of uh, Rhodes, I believe it is, of Sagertown, still out on the field talking to the official. <coughs> I, uh, I'd really like to know what the official uh, explanation of that would be. I know, you know, Tysel's excited to get their first win of the season, but I don't think you want to have yeah, this to be part well, of that. Well, the officials are going to yeah. talk about it now. He may have gotten their attention, and they may have gone. Now, they're going to talk about it, and they're going to step off the penalty now. Now, Tysel coaches are going to come out and talk to him, and I don't think Tysel, well, I'm assuming they're going to step off the penalty. But, can you, but can you, you can't go back and. Well, that's, that would be my question now. We ran a play. You know, and you know, uh, I was going to. I was going to say, I don't, wow. I don't think I, I don't think I roughed that kicker thirty years ago either. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, we like, can go back and replay that. Yeah, if you we want. can. Yeah, I want to go see that one. Here it is, right here. Here it is, here on the replay. And uh, yeah, and it is a rough. I had, I mean, I, I saw that too. Oh, it was legit. Yeah, he's running into the kicker, and uh, so now they're going to step it off. Now the question will be, <laughs> where do you step it off from? And uh, is it enough for the first down? Is it an automatic first down? Coach Hancock now is going to have a short discussion on the other side. Uh, quite honestly, uh, it was like the ball game the other night. Did you see in the baseball game where uh, they called a guy out at second and the, the uh, ball was not caught by the second base on an attempted double play? And the officials got to the umpires, got together, said, no, that was a bad call. And they changed it, and both sides were kind of hollering about it. So uh, this is what's happening here. This is a situation the officials have created for themselves uh, with some bad calls. So, anyway, it's going to be a fourth down. If they can get the chains marked right. So, it it's still like going to be a fourth down. Yeah. It now, looks now it's only a five-yard five penalty, but I mean. Well, now. So, now it's fourth down and ten. So, they're going to re-kick after all of that. Secretary is going to have to try to re-kick, and uh, we'll put uh, Dylan Cole back at about the 49 of Titusville, and we'll do it all over again. So, well, at least they corrected it. Chalk this up as a learning experience. And this time, Titusville does not hit the kicker. Cole takes it at the 48, fumbles it, picks it back up, and down he goes, uh, covering it up at the 45-yard line. So, it's will be a first down and 10 Titusville at their own 45. Okay. Yeah, it's one of those plays that you want corrected, uh, and now we're showing no time left on the clock. No, there's nine seconds. Oh, it's nine seconds. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the um, it, it's a situation where the officials have to correct it, and uh, and they did. First down and ten, Titusville. Nine seconds left on the clock. Twenty-eight nothing, Titusville. After all of that, and uh, we'll see what uh, Coach Hancock decides to do. We have double wise both sides again for Titusville. Now Titusville sends signs in motion to the right. Corkin dropping straight back. Throws up short, and we have a flag down as the pass is complete. Now we have two no flags, flags down, down. That's and this one has mask. to be a face mask, and the other one has to be a hold. Considering Lee's helmet is off. Now we have some extracurricular things going on out there, and uh, we'll see what happens here now with the ball. We have double penalties, one on time, so one on Segretine, I believe, and uh, it'll be one offsetting, and we'll run it again. Time has run off the clock. And uh, Aaron Lee is going off the other side. Titusville has uh, taken him out of the ball game. He was part of that altercation. I didn't catch the kids. Uh, you know, we've been talking all season um, about the kids and what they've been going through coming in here 0-8. Right. I think tonight we're seeing this entire year summed up here with, with the emotion. Yeah, it could be. Here's the uh, replay in that. Uh, the offsetting penalties hold on Titusville and face mask on uh, Sagertown. And uh, that's going to end the half. So I haven't seen a face mask yet, though. I think yeah. uh, I'm not sure there was one, <laughs> quite honestly. Well, anyway, maybe right there at the very end is that. Yeah. Off, so. But anyway, time runs out. Quite a bizarre finish the last 30 seconds of the half. 28 0 halftime, Titusville. And we'll be back with halftime activities. Stay right there. Hi folks, Joe, Mike, and Mike here from Donovan and Bauer Auto Group in Titusville. We know times are uncertain right now in our country between health care and unemployment. And what we do know is that Donovan and Bauer offers a large selection of new and certified pre-owned vehicles and the service department is second to none. So while the government may be shut down, 
we're not. Whether you're looking to buy a vehicle or just get your car winterized. Stop in the Donovan & Bauer Auto Group and join us with our Jeep Celebration and Truck Month. On the Hightown right Town Road in Titusville. Fall brings great savings and haunted happenings at the Cranberry Mall. Every Friday and Saturday into the first weekend of November, it's the Dark Domain Haunted House. Plus, get ready for the holidays with great savings throughout the entire mall. That's more like Cranberry Mall. That's more like Hi, I'm Phyllis Rapp, owner-designer here at Acorn Acres Floral Design. Acorn Acres has been voted best florist in the oil region for the past six years. Each design is created with the recipient in mind. Stop out or give us a call at 814-657-8599. For funeral, weddings, or everyday arrangements, contact us here at Acorn Acres Floral Design. Big G Tire and Auto on the High Town Road in Titusville is your home to the largest selection of tires for small compact cars to large semis. Need an oil change, inspection, or repair? Big G can service your vehicle while it's in the shop. Protect your vehicle with our fluid film undercoating to keep the rust at bay. Big G will keep you on the road. Tires for any size vehicle and auto repair. Come see us at Big G Tire and Auto on High Town Road in Titusville. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. Reports indicate suspicious activity in your sector. Q has supplied you with some musical instruments that will strike a chord with the one you seek.
Titusville High School Marching Band out on the field. Halftime here as the Rockets lead 28-0. A quick timeout, and we'll be back with more. This is the Allstate Insurance Jim Saxon Agency Halftime Show. We'll recap the first half coming up next. At Donovan and Bauer Auto Group, we recognize October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Fire Prevention Month. We would like to show our support in the following way. In October, when you purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle from Donovan and Bauer Auto Group, we will donate $50 to either the American Cancer Society or the fire department of your choice. Help us help them find new roads and take the short drive to Donovan and Bauer Auto Group, Route 8 North in Titusville. Titusville Chiropractor Adam Middleton welcomes you to the Titusville office of Middleton Chiropractic. Dr. Middleton is committed to improving the function of your nervous system so that you can have a higher quality of life. Through their office, you'll receive the best care through the use of modern chiropractic techniques and technology. Call us today and we can develop a chiropractic plan specific for you. 827-9970 or visit our website for more information. Middleton Chiropractic, your chiropractor in Titusville. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall in Titusville invite you in to view some of the finest jewelry in Northwest Pennsylvania. Morelli's is also home to unique gifts from area artisans, including chocolates from Roma Lowe of Erie. They also carry an extensive selection of engagement settings and loose diamonds to create the ideal ring for the ideal person. Morelli's also offers jewelry repair and they buy gold and silver. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall, Titusville. Morrison Builder Supply in Titusville carries just about everything you need for your next home fix-it project or for contractors working on any size project. Whether it's electrical, lumber, plumbing, or paint, Morrison's has supplies to allow you to complete your project and get the job done. Attention outdoorsmen, Morrison's too has the best selection of guns, ammo, clothing, and other accessories in stock and take advantage of great deals on muck boots. Morrison's and Morrison's too on West Central Avenue, Titusville. I love Titusville Area Hospital because it's a small hospital. The last two quarterly reports, Titusville has been in the top five community hospitals and patient satisfaction in the state of Pennsylvania. I think patients are given the opportunity to be cared for right at home rather than having to travel. Everything's contained right here. Being part of the community and knowing the community makes me do a much better job. We already have a personal aspect with them. I think this little hospital is a perfect thing for this little city. Armstrong's Value Pack brings you more of the kids' programming your family wants. Sprout Signature, The Good Night Show, tucks your preschooler in every night. Look to The Hub for Goosebumps, Fraggle Rock, and a new season of Family Game Night. And Boomerang has all our favorite classic cartoons for the kid and everyone. Nick Jr. and Nick Teen, Disney Jr. and Disney XD. Call today and add these great channels and more. Armstrong, one wire, infinite possibilities. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. And welcome back to the All-State Insurance Jim Saxon's Jim Saxon Agency Halftime Show. Let's talk about the first half of play here, guys. Well, <laughs> I was just, I'm still trying to digest the last two minutes. Um, but anyway, the first half, Titus come out emotionally uh, ready to play. And uh, they took control, I thought, right off the bat. And Mike and I was talking about it. Uh, during the game, uh, the first half of play, Mike, how Titus will uh, establish the running game. We've talked about it now for several weeks, and tonight they're able to do that. And, of course, that just opened up the passing game. Uh, um, I think Corkman's had the benefit of some really nice receptions um, by Titus. So Zach Carter especially has had a couple of very nice catches. And um, so the passing game's worked. The running game's worked. Titus has been clicking pretty much in all uh, cylinders. Two penalties cost us two touchdowns. But uh, we bought one back, and... Uh, and Aaron Lee took it in from 40-plus yards out and got that one back for us, but we still are missing one touchdown because of a holding call. But other than those mistakes, Mike, we've been playing pretty good. Yeah, and I, you know, you alluded to Zach Carter. Um, one of the things is when when Aaron was running the ball, that forces them to keep their linebackers close because mm -hmm. you have to stop the run or at least be looking for the run. And that that you know all they got to do is you know. Uh, you know, just a basic little, almost like a tight end route over the middle. And, uh, you know, he had that wide open several times. Uh, you know that, and you can run a quick slant. 
yeah, which they I've done on several occasions too. Yeah, they haven't been able to cover that uh, over the middle you talked about at different times during the first uh, half of play. Oh. And uh, Carter and even Cody Sines a couple of times been wide open and uh, uh, Corkin's throwing the ball well. But uh, but that is the running game, you got, like you mentioned, uh, when Lee's running as well as he is and uh, their linebackers stay up tight. Boy, the, in the secondary is dropping back. The corners are being – we're running four wideouts. That's that spread offense mentality. You run four wideouts, you cut guys down the field, that pulls your corners, and your safety's back there about 20 yards, and psh, right over the middle, the linebackers are up tight. Uh, that's what's been open for you, as you mentioned. Uh, and Tasso's taking advantage of that. Yeah, and, and you know, like uh, you know, we've alluded to several times during the season, that's, you know, the main game plan of the offense. But, uh, however, if you do not establish a running game, you know, it really doesn't help you, you know, as far as moving the ball. And one of the other threats we picked up, I think, this time, Luke, with uh, uh, the change we have at quarterback right now with Cork, and they, the last several ball games, uh, Tynesville has been switching back and forth quarterbacks. And uh, now, of course, it's uh, Corkland for the last two, three games. But uh, uh, Corkland's got some very good speed, and he showed that here tonight on that uh, one run. I think I have it marked down at about 43 yards. Uh, I don't think anybody out there can catch him once he gets it going. You know, this isn't a slam on any of the players, but I think uh, part of this season the three of us have been looking for those key players to yeah. step up and yeah. become leaders for this Rocket team. Uh, and we noticed a change, especially last week, uh, Jim, when, when Corkland became the quarterback for the Titusville Rockets. You saw a change in attitude out on yes. the field, and that and, and carried just, over tonight. Yeah, and that's good, Luke, because you saw that even a week or so before that when Coach Hancock made the decision to be right. alternate plays. He would send uh, Todd Brown at that time was playing with us, and uh, Todd would go to the wideout, and Cork would go to quarterback, and they kept switching back and forth. And uh, you saw a change in attitude coming. And that leadership's critical to uh, a team being a championship team. And uh, nobody has until this game. Nobody has really stepped up and taken that role. And uh, that's hey, a good you point. Know, even if we look at the, the, the names that we've been calling out all season, the Lees and the Signs and all these guys that we've been calling out, we're still waiting for that next step for them. Yeah. For them to say, yeah. guys, follow my lead. Yeah, and, and you know, Mike, one of the things that I was – preparing when I mentally prepare <laughs> the way I'm calling the game I'm not sure I was too mentally prepared but for the game tonight was uh, what effect would this game have on and I don't want to look ahead but what effect would this have on our last home game with Warren now uh, you come out of this game we're leading 28 nothing now I don't know what the final is going to be uh, you know we could end up losing 30 28 for that matter because Sigurdsson's not going to sit down and let us uh, romp over and they're going to come out of here fired up but um, if we come out of here with a big win what effect is that going to have in terms of what you're talking about attitude and leadership against the Dragons next week when they come in and visit us at Titusville. So it's, that's a very important uh, part of the aspect of the game that we've been looking for, and maybe we found it. Maybe this yeah. is the beginning for next year. And it's like I've always said, winning is addictive. Yeah. You know, once uh, once you win, losing is also very addictive, yes. fortunately in a bad way. And you got to learn how to win. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's absolutely true. And again, I'll go back to tonight. You've got players, you've got coaches who have had a wild ride this season. Mm-hmm. Both teams right now still 0-8, and, and there's a lot of emotion out there to pick up that first win of the season. So but you I can understand why the coaches are fighting out there for those calls. Yeah, and, and they're, they're fighting for their own, I don't I hate, I hate to use the term reputation, but for their school's winning record, et cetera. But they're also fighting for their kids. They know what the effort these kids have put in for, uh, well, preseason and during off season and all that stuff. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why when this situation has occurred the last couple of minutes of the first half becomes so important to you as a coach. you got to get out there and defend your kids. And the, the call on that uh, punt was uh, just not a good call. And <laughs> fortunately, they did correct it. And I'll give them that. But even correcting it, they broke the rules. The officials did because you, you can't correct that after the play has been uh, the ball was been put in play again, so kind of a bizarre ending. But uh, you're right; the emotion on both sides is quite good, and uh, it's going to be a very interesting second half because some things happened right at the end of halftime. We'll talk about that when we come back too. All righty, uh, that's going to wrap up the All State Insurance Jim Saxon Agency halftime show. Second half action coming up right after this. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall in Titusville invite you in to view some of the finest jewelry in Northwest Pennsylvania. Morelli's is also home to unique gifts from area artisans, including chocolates from Roma Lowe of Erie. They also carry an extensive selection of engagement settings and loose diamonds to create the ideal ring for the ideal person. Morelli's also offers jewelry repair, and they buy gold and silver. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall, Titusville. Morrison Builder Supply in Titusville carries just about everything you need for your next home fix-it project or for contractors working on any size project. 
Whether it's electrical, lumber, plumbing, or paint, Morrison's has supplies to allow you to complete your project and get the job done. Attention outdoorsmen, Morrison's too has the best selection of guns, ammo, clothing, and other accessories in stock and take advantage of great deals on muck boots. Morrison's and Morrison's 2 on West Central Avenue, Titusville. Beyond our industry competitive products and local decision-making capabilities, Farmers National Bank strives to be and do more for our customers and our communities. Unparalleled service and attention to detail with each individual customer is something that is not just a promise, it is an expectation that we embrace. So for all the things that home can mean, we invite our customers, businesses, and communities to come home to Farmers National Bank. Zoom email users. Your email has a great new look and some exciting new features. The enhancements include an improved web interface, more tools to keep you organized, and larger mailboxes. We've even added convenient links to your Facebook and Twitter accounts. The new look and upgraded features are designed to make your internet experience better than ever. For more information, visit armstrongmywire.com. Armstrong, one wire, infinite possibilities. Second half action just moments away. Our coverage is brought to you by Farmers National Bank. Come home to Farmers. By Donovan and Bauer Auto Group for GM and Chrysler on the Hightown Road. By the Colonial Machine Company, proud supporters of the Titusville Rockets. By Morrison Builder Supply for all of your home improvement projects. By Big G Tire and Auto. Get back on the road with Big G. By Middleton Chiropractic. Start living a higher quality of life. By Blue Kill Graphics for all of your custom screen printing and embroidery needs. By Armstrong Cable, one wire, infinite possibilities. By Titusville Area Hospital, high tech, top docs. By Acorn Acres for funeral, weddings, or everyday arrangements. By Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall in Titusville. And by the Cranberry Mall for everything you've been looking for. Rocket Football on the Stream is also brought to you by the Titusville Moose Family Center 84. The Blue Canoe. Bars Insurance. DNS Printing. Hasbrook Sand and Gravel. Erie Insurance, the Moore Insurance Agency. Boonies, Great Food Daily Specials. And Helsin Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Alrighty, second half action just moments away. Rockets lead 28 to 0. And a big thanks to uh, Jim Hunter of the Meadville Tribune uh, providing some stats here tonight, Jim. Yeah, he really did. Uh, Corkman is 7 for 11 for 96 yards in the first half. Aaron Lee, 8 carries for 78 yards. And uh, Brady Corkman, 6 carries for 56 yards. Titus with 171 yards rushing, 96 yards passing. Fetzner for uh, Segretown, uh, leading away for 6 carries for 28 yards, a total of 70 yards for. Uh, Segretown in the first half of play, Titus will end with uh, about 267 yards in the first half. So uh, pretty much a domination offensively for the Titusville Rockets uh, in that first half of play. And we appreciate those stats. Uh, good to have those. Both teams are back out on the field. We're uh, waiting to meet with the captains. And this uh, second half is going to start with, a, I believe, a penalty. And they're going to run the three minutes now on the clock, so we're about three minutes away from kickoff as the teams are loosening up. And we'll have to wait and see uh, uh, how this is all going to come into play here. As um, the Segretown team is all going out, to, uh, they're going to go out on the 40-yard uh, line to uh, go through their warm-ups uh, here to start the second half. Titus on the far side talking to Coach Hancock. So... Uh, it'll be interesting, Mike, to see the emotion that comes out because that was, like we mentioned, kind of a bizarre ending to the first half of play. Some things happened right after the clock was stopped. The team's going off the field, and there was a flag thrown. Uh, we don't know what it was for, and uh, we'll see here in a minute exactly what it is. But um, And then it, um, it it takes a lot of, what, fire out of you or something of that type uh, when, you, when you have these things happening. So... Uh, can you use that in your favor as a coach? That will be the, the key to it for Segertown because it affected them more than it did Titusville. Yeah, and I <clears throat> I agree with you, Jim. I think, you know, that's one of those things. It's, you know, you almost got a chip on your shoulder when you come out, you know, after a situation like that. 
Um, I have a feeling I think there was a penalty at the end of the first half. They'll probably assess that on the kickoff. Yeah, we'll know because uh, Tyson yeah. has to kick off to get the second half going, and if it's against every time, we'll kick from about the uh, 50. Because uh, mm -hmm. if it's an unsportsmanlike, it'll be a 15-yard penalty. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just an emo emotional roller coaster, so we'll just – we just have to wait and see how these teams can respond to it. 28 nothing Titus at halftime. Uh, of course, you have that 35 nothing Mercy rule that comes into play, too. So it's important in this first series, I think, for Sacred Town to come out and get a score. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you talked about, you know, the the, uh, the play at the end of the first half, you know. Uh, let's put it this way. In 30-plus years, I've been either <laughs> – Playing football, yeah. watching football, broadcasting it, whatever. I have never seen anything like that. <laughs> well, it's just, uh, I, uh, like I said, it's nice that they made the correction. Unfortunately, they made it wrong. Uh, yeah. In, in that, uh, once the Tigers ran that first play, they can't come back now and, and change things. But they did do that. And um, it turned out the same. I mean, Tigers got the ball f because they had to punt it anyway. But uh, it was just the way the uh, the officials handled that was uh, puts it a little bit in question. And the coaches uh, both sides of the field uh, were speaking syllables to the uh, officials in that Well, I mean, call. you know, even even Coach Hancock, he had to sit over, you know, hey, you know, what's what's going on here? Is this what I'm going to expect the rest of the game? Well, and, you and, know. and you're wrong here, guys. I mean, you may have blown the call, but uh, once we snap the ball, you can't go back and do that. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, questions that way. But uh, shake it all off, start all over again. And I, I think for we've said this several times, when you're down 28 nothing as Sager Town is right now, you can back at a nothing nothing game and see if you can't put 35 on the board and uh, not give them anything else, and then you win. So that's got to be the key uh, for Sager Town. They have got to uh, get themselves emotionally ready to play. And I think this first drive is going to be real important. Yeah, and I uh, I agree with you on that, you know, because, you know, obviously we're going to be kicking the ball, so it's going to be a defensive series. And, it would, you know, it would be nice if it was a three and out or something like that. Or So we're just going to have to uh, – we're going to have to see here. Well, they spotted the ball at the 40, so we may be uh, full of hot air right now. We may not be sure. Unless he made a mistake on this one also. And welcome back. Second half action just moments away. 28-0. Excuse me, Luke. Titus was going to kick off, and now there's a penalty uh, to start this half. Titus was going to kick off from the Sager Town 45-yard line as uh, there was a flag right at the end of the first half, and the penalty is being assessed here at the kickoff. So Titus will spot it up at the 45-yard line. Sager Town will get first possession. We've got uh, 24 minutes of football left here at Sager Town High School. Titus will leading 28 nothing. Sager Town to see if they can get something started here to get um, a little bit change of emotion and uh, momentum here in the second half. Gianti will tee it up for Tasso, and now he's going to tee at the center of the field. And um, we'll have to check some of the uh, back deep for is Bernardo, standing back at about his own five-yard line. And then the kick is going to get down deep and over the head into the end zone, and so it'll be first down and 10 out of the 20. Yeah, I thought, uh, I thought they might have had something going on there because I was looking at the at Titusville's line as they were down there, and it looked almost like a hands team. Yeah, you know, It was all receivers <laughs> and backs with the exception of Austin Christie. You know, it was pretty much all the hands team, and I thought, okay, maybe they're going to start it off with, the, uh, with an onside kick. Well, Titusville has been successful in one onside already, and that uh, attributed to a touchdown for Titusville, but uh, that time kicked it out of the end zone. First down and 10 for Segertown at their own 20-yard line as they break huddle. Willie Bernardo will come wide to the left. In the slot is Fetzner. Now they'll send their tight end Berger to the other side. Back split. And the ball is getting off to the second man through. He's going to come out across the 20 to the 22-yard line. And that would be, I believe, uh, number two. That's Taylor. Yeah, well, no well, game. Yeah. Hogue was on the tackle. Name we haven't called a whole lot tonight, but uh, had a great game last week. Second down and nine. 11 35, just underway here in third quarter. Segre Town. We'll try to get something going here, this, get this uh, half started uh, in a positive way. Rose goes wide to the right. Berger comes and moves over to the left side at tight end. Ball's handed off to Fitzner. He's going to try to get to the outside. He dives out across the 25 and is going to come out across the 30. Probably enough for the first down, depending upon the spot. And it will be Fetzner 
will pick up the first down. So it'll be first down and 10, Sagertown. Yeah, once again, they went to that right side. Um, you know, there's nobody staying at home there for Titusville, you know, and you're, you know, you got your defensive backs trying to close, and eventually if you do that enough, you're going to get burned on a pass play. Nishnet comes wide to the left. Fitzner is in the wing left, back split. Quarterback gives the ball off to Taylor. Taylor comes off the left side. He's out across the 25, 35 and out to about the 37. And uh, now a flag on the play. Late flag coming in on the far side. And I'm not sure what that's going to be. And it's on the far side. It was a late flag coming in. So something happening over there away from the play. The ball come out across the uh, 35 to about the 37. Holding is going to be called. Holding against Sagertown. So that'll move the ball back, and uh, that's those kinds of mistakes that uh, we talk about in our pregame show. You don't want to, either team, want to make mistakes like that. Shoot yourselves in the foot and stop a drive. That'll back them up 10 yards. So instead of a good gain, now uh, they go back and they pick up a... On the holding call, they take the ball back to about the 26. First down. Kudahi under center. Kurtahi. Kurtahi, that's what I said. <laughs> Thank you. Straight up the left side, Kurtahi. And that is Schultz on the carry. He picks up good yardage. He talks it out to about the 38. Yeah, it was a I've said that name about six different ways tonight, I think. We have eight marked. We have eight? Oh, okay. <laughs> what was the over-under, Luke? <laughs> First down. Check that. Second down and short. Now, Berger goes to the right side at tight end. Back split. Fetzner in motion, and we have an offside. Titusville into the neutral zone, and that'll bring up the first down as the ball will come out across the 45. And uh, it'll be a first down and 10. So Titusville defensively not doing real, faring very well here in the first couple minutes of the second half. The penalty brings it out to the 44. A couple of early mental mistakes, and I hope it doesn't cost them. Taylor's in the wing right, back split. Berger switches again to the right side. Ball's getting off the first man through Schultz. He drives ahead inside Titusville territory to about the 46. Check that, I'm sorry. He brings it out to about the 49 of, of uh, Sagertown. And Christie on the uh, tackle again. Second down and about seven or so. Wing right now with Taylor. Berger switches to the right at tight end. Taylor comes in motion. Ball's given off to the first man through Schultz. Schultz across the 45, driven out of bounds about the 43-yard line. Another first down for Sagertown. So to bring up a first down and 10 for the Panthers, moving the ball well now. They get that drive that we talked about, an important first drive of the second half for Sagertown. So it'll be first down and 10. The ball spotted at the 44 of Titusville. Fetzner in the wing left, back split. Fetzner in motion. Given off to the first man through Schultz. Breaks a tackle. He's out across the 35 and brought down close to the 35, about the 37. Thought he might break that one. Lamy checked that hug up to make the stop. Boy, Matt Key only came about two steps away from uh, breaking that one for big yardage. Yeah, just a, you know, a straight power run. There's a, looks like somebody had him. It looked like one missed tackle. A good stiff arm there. And then the uh, handoff goes to the first man through here in this uh, play. It's Regal on a second down play. Brings up a third and short. Look at Jason Oaks on the tackle. 8.30 left to go for third quarter. 28-0 Titusville. Titusville can't get complacent with his score. That's the last thing you can do. Fitzner is in the wing left, back split. Fitzner's in motion. Now they hand the ball off to Regal once again, straight ahead. And he takes it inside the 30 to the 29. And Segertown's got some fire in him now. 
Uh, they're driving the ball well. They're moving us right off the line. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. And driving down now that they've got the ball down now to the Titusville 30. Yeah, they're moving it quite effectively. And once again, like you just said, Jim, you know, they're controlling the line. Rose goes wide to the right. Three in the backfield. Ball is given off to Riga once again. He drives inside 30 to about uh, uh, 28 or so. Let's see when they unpile. A.J. Christie in on the stop for Titusville. Give him one on the play, second down nine. Wide side of the field is to the right. Right now, they're just going straight up the field on us. Wide to the right, Nishnak. Back split. Wing right. Now in motion is Taylor. The ball is given off to Regal. Regal straight across the right side. He drives down close to the 20-yard line. He may have enough for the first down inside the 20. Yeah, and they're, looks like they're moving the chains. Yeah, they're blowing well, they're Titus right off the line. First down and 10 now for Sagertown as they take the ball inside the 20 through about the 19. See, it's just a, a, a straight up draw right through the middle and there was no one there, just a wide open hole. Bernardo comes wide to the left. Again, back split in motion. Fits, the ball is handed off to Regal, and he's going to be tripped up first by Hogue and then uh, stopped in there by Stearns. And one thing, too, Jim, is the clock is getting ready to you know, click under seven or seven minutes now. Uh, good ball control. They're, they're eating up a lot of the clock. You know, you don't have to get it all back at once. I'm, I'm pretty sure their coach told them that at halftime. Second down and nine. The ball is at the 14 of Titusville. Check that, 19 of Titusville. Back split. Wing right. Ball's getting off to Regal. Going to his right, gets the block, and he's going to be hit. Nice play out there by the Titusville corner coming up. Let's see who that is when it gets up. And probably um, signs over there. It is. Yeah, signs, Cody yeah. Signs. Been playing well in that corner tonight. Regal will pick up a couple. Be uh, about a second, third down. Check that. Third down and about seven. Bernardo will come wide to the left. Backs will be split. Wing left for Sagertown. Ball is given off on the counter and driving ahead. Tassel had a shot at him at the line. Now they stack him up. Not going to get enough for the first down, but uh, good yardage on a tough play. Taylor was on the carry for uh, Sagertown. Brings up fourth down. Big play here for both teams. Yeah, that was uh, that was one of those. I, I, I'm sure they watched some film. They, they they obviously saw that we have trouble with the counters. Well, we'll see what they draw up now. It's fourth down, now a timeout. And that timeout will be taken by Sagertown. I we have time out on the field. 524 left to go in the third, 28-0. Titusville, we'll be right back. At Donovan and Bauer Auto Group, we recognize October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Fire Prevention Month. We would like to show our support in the following way. In October, when you purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle from Donovan and Bauer Auto Group, we will donate $50 to either the American Cancer Society or the fire department of your choice. Help us help them find new roads and take the short drive to Donovan Bauer Auto Group, Route 8 North in Titusville. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. 5.24 left to go, third quarter, 28-0. Titusville, Sagertown with a good drive. And uh, this ball started, this drive started at their own 20. And uh, they've got it down now to the, uh, about the 11-yard line of Titusville. That lady has it right. Nice yeah. hot tea. Yeah. Hot <laughs> yeah. tea and a uh, very cool ooh. hat. On a cold night. All right, big play for both ball clubs. Uh, fourth down and short. Fourth and two. As Sagertown comes out of huddle, they'll send wide to the right. Zach Nishnak. Backs will be split. Be strong side left formation. Ball giving off the first man through. He's got more than enough. He drives down inside to 10 to about the uh, six-yard line. First and goal for Sagertown. Titus will not even make the stop. I'll tell you and what, if he, if he would have slipped, 
Yeah, he may have had the TD. His feet went up. Well, well he's, we had a couple boys there, but uh, now another timeout on the field. This time, Titusville is going to take the timeout. 519 left to go in the third, and it is 28 nothing Titusville. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I love Titusville Area Hospital because it's a small hospital. The last two quarterly reports, Titusville has been in the top five community hospitals and patient satisfaction in the state of Pennsylvania. I think patients are given the opportunity to be cared for right at home rather than having to travel. Everything's contained right here. Being part of the community and knowing the community makes me do a much better job. We already have a personal aspect with them. I think this little hospital is a perfect thing for this little city. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. Nice size crowd on hand tonight here at Sager Town to enjoy the uh, Panther Rocket game and lots of great food over the concession stands. Oh, we had a good time, didn't we? Oh, jeez. Good old hot sausage and uh, all kinds of good stuff over there. Two concession stands here, and uh, we've utilized them. They're nice. First down and goal from the five for Sager Town. It's been a, uh, be an 80, so far, 75-yard drive. Back split. Titus Hill jumps. Ball is getting off the Regal fumble, and it's recovered by Titusville, Titusville, I think. Titusville looks like they got it. We'll see, and we're not sure it is. Titusville got the recovery. Wow. Jason Oaks on the recovery. So Titusville have it. Oh. First was down. Was it Yeah, it was offsides, I thought. I'm surprised they didn't throw the flag also. Yeah, the ball's out. No question about that. And uh, Oaks just wrestled uh, the ball away. So it's first down and 10, Titusville, and they'll take over at their own seven-yard line. So, yeah, that's, you have to wonder about that call, too, or no call. You know, and that's the that's uh, first turnover in the game, if I'm not mistaken. So Titusville now to put it in play at 5.07. So a mistake by Segertown, a break to Titusville. Well, they got nine men up in the box, ten men up in the box against our run, Mike, that you talked about yes. during our break at halftime. Corklin with the ball. And the ball's given off to the back, coming across the right side. He's going to be stopped inside the five. Big loss. I'll tell you, you've got to give uh, Sigurd Time some credit. Their emotion is really high, and they're playing well. It was one mistake, but uh, after a 75-yard drive, they turned it over on a fumble. But uh, other than that, um, uh, they come out here defensive play. Second down and about 14 for Titusville. They're really high. Yeah, and I think that call at the end of the first half, you know. Fired them up. It, it fired them up, and it worked against us, you know. Titusville now will uh, send doubles to the left, doubles to the right. Second down, 14. The ball is on their own five. Ackerman goes in motion to the left. We'll send three wideouts now to the left. 420 left in the third. Titusville's first possession of the second half, deep in their own territory. And now it's a safety. Titusville is caught in the end zone for the safety, and I haven't seen the signal. There's the, the signal. Safety. Yeah. So Titusville trying to run a counter to the left, and uh, Titusville is tackled in their end zone. Two points for Segertown, and Titusville will have to kick off. You know, it's the only bad thing about running an offense like this when you're in shotgun all the time. You're always starting, you know, Seven yards deep. deep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially when you're at your own two. <laughs> yeah. So Sagertown picks up the two points on the emotion, and uh, Titusville will have to kick off by a free kick, and they'll do that. I think it's from their 20, 25. We'll see when uh, they come out. I believe it's a 20. Uh, but give credit to Sagertown. Uh, even though they turned it over, their defense stepped right up and uh, drove Titusville back into the end zone and uh, on two plays and got the safety. 28 to 2 at 412 left in the third. So the Rockets are going to have to uh, kind of get themselves pulled together. And here you go back to what you're talking about, Luke, leadership. Somebody's going to have to step up for Titusville emotionally and get things going back on the right track because uh, right now they're being outplayed in uh, all aspects of the game. Yeah, you know, and, and it's pretty bad. They had the ball for well over seven minutes, and we had the ball for what, two plays and maybe. 35 seconds? Yeah, yeah. I mean. The only disadvantage for Sagertown, you mentioned this a little bit ago, but the, their offense is designed in such a way it so far has taken them five to seven to ten minutes to push the ball 70 yards. 
down 28 points, you can't really do that because time will run out on you. But at the same time, you're about ready to break one of those, well, and they've come yeah. close a couple of times. <laughs> Johnny will tee it up at the 20-yard line. Would Hancock try an onside kick here? Do, 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 do. Here we go. And not really, but it's a short kick taken out about the 42, the 40 yard line. Breaks to the outside is Schultz. He's loose. He's down at the 20 and driven out of bounds about the 19. So that time we paid for the short kick. And Schultz takes it down inside the 20 to about the 15, 16 yard line. We'll see where the spot will be when they bring it across closer to the 20. Short kick and poor tackling. You'll, you'll see it here. The kick to the right, he's done this a number of times tonight. Short, Schultz just gets the ball. There's one man that slipped, two missed tackles. Cody signs in pursuit, and he finally gets to him to knock him out of bounds. First down and 10, Segertown, back split. Ball was given off to Regal, straight up the middle. Drives inside the 15 to about the 12. Pick up about eight on the play. I would be very concerned over on the Titusville sidelines ah, right me now. too. There's a lot of momentum coming on this side of the field. And uh, the Rockets need to pick it up. Second down three. Give them seven on the play. Hey, you can't give seven, eight yards a shot on every running play and expect to, uh, you know, especially when you can't move the ball. In motion. Berger goes to the right. Titusville shifts defensively. And now the fumble on the play, and the quarterback just has to cover it up, along with Regal. That'll be uh, a wasted down, and you don't really want to do that if you're a circuit town as much trouble you've had um, trying to contain or uh, to be consistent in your offensive drive. Loss of a couple on the play, third down and five. <clears throat> Out of the huddle, they'll send... One wide left. Mishnek backs the split. Berger now will switch to the right side, overload the right side. In motion, Taylor. On the counter, Regal straight up the side, and he's going to get close to the first down marker. Fumble on the play. Titusville Another indicating fumble. they got it. It is. It's Titusville it's got it again. Regal coughs it up, and Titusville will take it over it's inside the 10. Dan Stearns on that. Got that one. Two big mistakes for uh, Sagertown. Nice block. Comes in. Cody signs with a nice hit. And that's Ripped what sprung, sprung the ball loose. So Tassel. Dan Stearns was there. Yeah, Tassel with two breaks right now. Um, has a first down and 10 at their own eight this time. Double wise both sides for Titusville. And now we have a flag on the play. And... I'm not sure what it is. They're going to go talk this one over. Tasso comes out of the huddle to put the ball in play. And the official's coming up center of the field. Hey, a sideline violation on Segertown, and I think that's a warning. That's all. Uh, there'll be no penalty. I think the first one's a warning. So it's just a warning. Uh, I don't believe they'll step anything off. No, I think they... You get one warning. Yeah, you get one warning usually. So Tyson will have trips to the right. Corklin again in shotgun. Aaron Lee in the backfield. Ball is given to Aaron Lee off the left side. Lee gets upfield about three yards, and he's hit and driven back. Bring it outside the 10 to about the 11 or so. Pick up maybe three on the play. Be second down and seven for Titusville. Yeah, they're trying to make something happen over the uh, the left side. There, the thing is, is to establish the running game once again. Two minutes left in the third. Now yeah, the clock's in Titusville's favor, uh, being ahead by 26 points. So the more time they can run off, obviously the yeah. better off they'll be. Double wides left and right for the Rockets. Aaron Lee again in the backfield. Titusville now brings him in tight on the left side. They move Carter back to the backfield. That play didn't look very good. Lee coming out the wrong side, uh, the right side, excuse me, across the 10 to about the 13-yard line. But uh, 
appeared to be some uh, motion on uh, that play, but uh, there's no flag on it. So it'll be a third down situation for the uh, Rockets with 1.15 left to go here in the third. So third down Titusville. I'll tell you, Titusville is just have some uh, guardian angels on their side this half because they've had uh, themselves in some really bad predicaments. And uh, uh, Segretown just unable to hang on to the ball has uh, saved Titusville. Double wise left and right for the Rockets once again. Corklin again at quarterback, shotgun. Corklin gives it off to Lee. Lee breaks one tackle, tries to get to the outside, cuts it up the middle, gets a good block. He's out across the 20, the There's 25, Corklin. 30, the 40. He's broke it. And if there's no flags, I don't think, well, don't they've got a chase on him. And Lee's going to take it to the house with no flags. A broken play, and uh, Titus got a good block on the outside. Well, on the and inside, there was a good block by Corklin who came back and cut. 80, It'll show. eight yards. Comes in, comes and back. Should have had him right there. There, Corklin was coming across. Now you ain't going to see that on the replay, but he is just gone from there. So touchdown, Titusville, and uh, Titusville now will put it in play with the uh, kick, extra point attempt, and it'll be Mike Gianti. Boy, that's a heartbreaker for Segertown. They've been playing so well this first uh, part of the second half here. This whole third quarter has been them. And, yeah, uh, they dominated. Yeah, they <laughs> did, a... and they turned it over twice, and then we break one for 88. Waiting for the snap. Placement is down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 32 seconds left to go in the third quarter, 35-2. to two. Titusville on top will have the Rocket kickoff. Rocket football, Panther football on the stream and Armstrong Cable. Glad you're with us. Stay there. Beyond our industry competitive products and local decision-making capabilities, Farmers National Bank strives to be and do more for our customers and our communities unparalleled service and attention to detail with each individual customer is something that is not just a promise it is an expectation that we embrace so for all the things that home can mean we invite our customers businesses and communities to come home to farmers national bank now back to titusville rocket football on the stream Nice size Titusville crowd on hand tonight. Week eight of high school football. Going by in a hurry, isn't it? I was on the net the other day checking out my Arizona Wildcats for basketball season already, and uh, it's about time to start looking at hoops. they got a game coming up here in another week. And yeah, we're pretty excited. We just pulled off the uh, University of Pittsburgh at Titusville basketball schedule, so we're set to go there. And, of course, uh, they got a couple good teams coming up this year, I think. Yeah, Rocket basketball, swimming, wrestling. Johnny will tee it up at the 40 on the right hash mark once again. <clears throat> Keep it out of Schultz's hands this time. And they do. They kick it down the middle. It's a hard kick. And it is recovered by. They're still fighting for it. I'm not sure. Titus was saying they have it. Schultz had a shot at it. And it is. See if we can watch this again. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the referee to make a signal. There you go. I think, the it, well, see, I think it hit one of the linemen. Oh, you know, I did. One it, you're the, right. But it also came out of the belly of Schultz here, yeah. and we dove on it. So Tyus will put it in play first down and 10. Do you know, sometimes you think, well, why all these onside kicks? We have anybody can kick it any deeper. Yeah. Uh, Todd did most of our kickoffs, and um, he's no longer on the ball club. So uh, Gianti now is doing the kicking. He's a good place kicker, but he didn't, doesn't kick deep. Trips to the right, stacked for Titusville. Corklin out of quarterback. Ball's handed off, first man through. No, Corklin keeps Corklin, it, excuse me, out keeper. across the 35, the 30, the 25, down about the 24. Belly series this time, he, Corklin keeps it, takes it inside the 25 to about the 23-yard line. First down and 10, Titusville. Yeah, he, all he had was one man to, to, to break there. If he could have broke that tackle, he would have been gone. Yeah, I think that... Uh, that 88 yarder kind of broke Segertown's back. That was just a tough play because they had played so well in that third quarter, uh, statistically just totally dominating the third quarter and uh, coughing it up twice. And Tasso took advantage of the second turnover with an 88 yard scamper by Aaron and uh, put the ball up two seconds, one second left to go. Third quarter is going to end. 
In the three here at Sagerstown, 35 to two. Titus still on top. We'll have fourth quarter action for you right after this. Stay with us. Hi folks, Joe, Mike, and Mike here from Donovan and Bauer Auto Group in Titusville. We know times are uncertain right now in our country between health care and unemployment. And what we do know is that Donovan and Bauer offers a large selection of new and certified pre-owned vehicles and the service department is second to none. So while the government may be shut down, we're not. Whether you're looking to buy a vehicle or just get your car winterized. Stop in the Donovan and Bauer Auto Group and join us with our Jeep celebration and truck month. On the Hightown uh, Road, Road in Titusville. Titusville. Fall brings great savings and haunted happenings at the Cranberry Mall. Every Friday and Saturday into the first weekend of November, it's the Dark Domain Haunted House. Plus, get ready for the holidays with great savings throughout the entire mall. That's more like it. Cranberry Mall. That's more like it. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. Well, fourth quarter action about to get underway here as uh, Segertown will put it in play. First down and 10. The ball, will be, check that, Titus will put it in play. First down and 10 at the Segertown 23. Titus will now making the shift. will bring trips in tight on the left side. In motion, McIntyre to the right. The ball's given off to the left. And coming out to the left side, and I believe that will be Cole. Yeah, it's Dylan and Cole. He'll be tossed uh, for a bit of a loss back at the 26, a loss of about two. So Dylan Cole running at the uh, tailback position. 35-2, Titusville on top. Kind of a crazy game. Uh, been up and down in the second half especially. Has a good defensive play by the uh, Panthers. Yeah, Dylan was trying to get outside. He just didn't. Didn't have enough to get around uh, number 22, I believe it was. In motion goes McIntyre, and they're going to stack tight on the right side for Titusville. Lamey on the left. Fumble on the play. Titus was able to hang on to it, but uh, the snap was fumbled by Corklin. He did get the handoff to Cole, but um, Cole's going to lose about uh, another five or six on that play. Yeah, just a bad exchange there. You know this. You know this time of uh, night, Jim. You know you're in that part of the field. You've been playing on it all game. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of hard to keep that ball dry. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty wet out there, and it's slippery it, in the middle of the field. You can see a little wear in the field. That and just you know little things. Your hands get cold. You know, just stuff like that. Titus with doubles both sides again, on the snap. Cole straight up the middle. He's going to go nowhere. I believe it's uh, Austin Rhodes on the stop initially for Sagertown. Bring up a fourth down for Titusville. So fourth down, Titusville at the, uh, yeah, let's see here where they spot. Where are they, where's their spot in the 31-yard line? So let's see what uh, Coach Hancock sends in here in the fourth down play. A lot of fresh numbers out there for Titusville. We'll it's see. Fourth and 17. Cody Sines wondering where he's supposed to be. Now <laughs> Chianti comes in motion. And we have uh, motion now in Titusville as the second receiver goes in motion. <laughs> so it'll be a five yard against the illegal procedure against Titusville. Two men in motion, can't be doing that. Did not get the formation correct from the get-go in that play. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, this ain't arena football. <laughs> as far <laughs> yeah. as I know. Yeah. <laughs> Or Canadian. Yeah, that's right. Can, uh, Canadian football, they can do that too. <laughs> yeah. Dakota Sutton into the ball game for the Rockets. Sutton's a 5'7", 130-pound junior. He's wide out to the left. Also, as uh, Jordan Satora, he goes in motion to the right now, and they'll stack on the right side. Dylan Cole in the backfield with Corklin. Satora in motion. Corklin loses the fumble. And they dive on it. Segertown saying they have it. And the officials are waiting to see who gets up with it. And, and Segertown does have it. Bad snap. And uh, that's something that hasn't happened a lot with Titusville this year. Uh, 
My, Matt Kerr has been pretty uh, consistent yeah, in his snapping. He's playing very well at center. But uh, that time, that series, we had two bad snaps. So Sagertown will take over. They'll send Bernardo wide to the right. On the snap, the ball's given off to the Regal. We check that Fitzner, and he slips and falls down as he comes across the 45. Fitzner picks yeah, they up were, about six. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the defense or not, Jim, but I mean, they were really stacking the gaps in that area. No, actually, I was uh, trying to focus in on their personnel out there, Mike. Mm. Second down and two. Gain of eight. Wide to the left now goes Nishnak. Fitzner in the wing left. Ball is given off to Taylor. Taylor going to the right side. He cuts across the 50, the 45, inside the 45 to about the 43. I thought we were going to stop him uh, at the line of scrimmage, but, uh, boy, he just blew right by us. Yeah, he just had that extra step of acceleration, and then, you know, once again, he missed. You know, there was a couple of missed tackles there, and they're going to take advantage of that. First down and 10 for Segertown. The inside, they are inside Tyson territory to 43. Taylor in the wing right. Again, back split. Taylor goes in motion to the left. Fumble on the play, oh, well. and it's picked up by the quarterback and held on. So it'll be a second down and 10. We're seeing a couple different fumble exchanges now. I think it's just that time of the, of the game. It could be. The field is, you know, worn out. The ball is getting a little slippery out there. Second down, 10. We're at the 8-12 mark in the fourth quarter. 35-2, to two, Titusville. Berger switches to the left side. Strong side, left formation now for Segertown. Ball's given off to Taylor. Taylor out across the left side to the, about the 45. Inside the 45 to about the 44-yard line. Good drive. Brings up uh, a third down situation. Third and uh, maybe five or six. Yeah. Cody signs again on the tackle. 740 left to go here in the ball game. Zach Nishnik comes in with the next play for Segertown. He'll come wide to the right. Fitzner will be in the wing to the left, back split. Quarterback is going to keep it coming to the left side. Looking for a block, and he's going to get to the outside and be driven out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Yeah, now they're going to throw the flag. flag yeah. It's a little late, but... Uh, uh, Kardahi excited about that. Yeah, that's a 15-yarder, a little late hit. We'll have to watch that one see. Uh, that's one you need to throw. Personal foul. That'll be a 15-yarder. That won't make the coaching staff at Titusville very happy. There he comes yeah. off the right. And, yeah, uh, considering he was going out of bounds anyway. Yeah, yeah. You, so you can see, here he goes. And he's not going to yeah, he's out of the bounds. bounds. Yeah. Good call. 7-12 left to go in the ball game, 35-2. to two. The ball will be marched off 15 yards. to take it down right around the 20, 15, 20-yard 20 line. <clears throat> so once again, Segretown with a push and the help of a 15-yard personal foul penalty. It'll bring up a first down and 10. The ball will be at the 16 of Titusville. Rose will be wide to the right. The ball is given off to, I believe, Taylor. He's out across the 15 to the 10 and down around the five. Enough probably for the first down. Fitner, excuse me, Fitzner with the carry. Looks like it's Brown on the tackle. And that'll bring up a first down and goal inside the five of Titusville. So once again, Segertown now driving. And uh, every time they get down in here, they have trouble hanging on to the ball. See if they can punch this one in. They got... Uh, Schultz back into the backfield, 180-pound junior. Taylor on the wing right. Fitzner in the running back left side. Taylor in motion. The ball's given off to Schultz. Schultz drives through. Touchdown. In for the score. So Matt Mitchell Short Schultz picks up the first touchdown for Stegertown at the 647 mark. Makes it 35 to 8 as Stegertown will go for two. Well, I shouldn't coach that. I'm not sure that's what they're going to do. 
It appears that's what they're going to do. Yeah, once again, he just went straight off right tackle. So a good, good hard run. Good running back. Wide to the right will come the wide out. Bernardo backs again, split. The ball is given off to the tailback, James, and he's in for the two. Check that, it's Fitzner. Fitzner with the two-point conversion. 6.47 left to go in the ballgame, 35-10. Titus will on top. We'll be back with the Sagertown kickoff right after this. Zoom email users. Your email has a great new look and some exciting new features. The enhancements include an improved web interface, more tools to keep you organized, and larger mailboxes. We've even added convenient links to your Facebook and Twitter accounts. The new look and upgraded features are designed to make your internet experience better than ever. For more information, visit armstrongmywire.com. Armstrong, one wire, infinite possibilities. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. And welcome back with 6.47 to go in the ball game. Rockets lead 35-10. to 10. I think the coaching staff of Titus was going to be real pleased with uh, this second half performance. I know that we've done a little bit of substituting, but not that much. Uh, it's just the emotional uh, level in which we're playing that uh, uh, I think is going to be a problem. We got the hands kids out there right now, expecting the onside I, kick. But I was going to say they better have the hands team out there, and it's a different kicker. No, Rose is going to kick off. Coach Bodemer down there didn't look too happy. No, high, high kick. And it's going to be taken by Corkin at the 30, the 35, the 40. Across the 40 to about the 44-yard line. Boy, a couple of tackles there uh, have let go of him, tacklers. He is going to break that one. Yeah. He wasn't too far uh, away from uh, taking that one to the house. Cody Rector was the uh, Yeah, I was main surprised they kicked it to Corkland of all the people, you know, and unless they didn't see what he's done on other kickoffs. In well, I I'm not too sure about what they miskicked it. I don't know if they wanted to kick it that high either. I'm sure they're going onside. Yeah. And now we have a timeout. 6.42 to go, and it is uh, 35 to 10 times on top here. And again, um, uh, if I'm Coach Hancock and Coach Bodemer and the rest of the Tyson <coughs> staff over there, uh, I'm probably going to have myself a little bit of a conversation with my boys about the second half of play. Well, I but, think you'd have to because, I mean, you know, it was an obvious letdown, you know, defensively. You could just tell they came out of the locker room, and it was like they just – I'm not saying they wanted to mail it in, but there was just no steam with them. Yeah, I'd be concerned, Jim. We talked earlier about uh, Warren coming into the right the take on the Rockets at Carter Field next week. Not the way you want to prep for that game. No, I don't think so because you had such a good first half, uh, totally dominating the first half. Sagertown has, by yardage, totally dominated Titus with the second half. Uh, picked up 10 points here. Uh, uh, even when they turned the, Sagertown turned the ball over twice deep in Titus territory, uh, they didn't quit. They came right back out, pushed us back into the end zone for the safety. So emotionally, they've just been the, the better team this second half. And uh, that's going to come back to haunt you, even if you have just one game left. And uh, so I don't think Titusville so coaches are going to be too happy about that. Chase Ackerman in at quarterback for Titusville now as we get under, underway here at 642. Ackerman gives the ball off to the first man. He's hit and dropped immediately. Oh. Probably Dylan Cole right at the 40. Loss of about four on the play. A lot of uh, new shirts out there, even in the interior line for Titusville. Yeah, I was just going to say there's a new center. I noticed that, and then I started looking. They were all they were all new. Yeah, I think it's the entire JV team that's out there right now. For the most part, some of the wideouts are the same. I see Rich Brown's in there, and uh, Zach Carter's still in there. Hogue is still in there. Uh, I guess maybe now in a second long, some of the starters are coming back in there. The line's going to stay pretty much the same. Chase Ackerman at quarterback. Hogue is at the running back. Tyson now makes the switch. They'll stack three tight on the left side. In motion, McIntyre. Ball's given off to Hogue, and he's hitting stopped. Oh, Ooh. big hit. Nice play in there by Schultz. Wow. Mitchell Schultz right in there and said good morning. He just, yeah, he just shot a gap. 
Boy, he's a yeah, good thing he held on. Wonder he even held onto the ball. Sagerton's going to take a timeout with 5:32 to go in the fourth, 35 to 10. Titusville. We're going to take a quick timeout. Be back with the rest of tonight's ball game right after this. Titusville chiropractor Adam Middleton welcomes you to the Titusville office of Middleton Chiropractic. Dr. Middleton is committed to improving the function of your nervous system so that you can have a higher quality of life. Through their office, you'll receive the best care through the use of modern chiropractic techniques and technology. Call us today and we can develop a chiropractic plan specific for you. 827-9970 or visit our website for more information. Middleton Chiropractic, your chiropractor in Titusville. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. Well, the game may be winding down, but there's still some folks out there with Pep on the Sagertown side. Rockets lead 35-10 to here in the fourth with 5.32 to go in the ball game. Rockets making their way back out on the field. Well, we'll see what uh, Titusville can do right now with a third in the bundle, 19. Ackerman again, still a quarterback. Oop, snaps over his head. The ball's back at the 20. Ackerman's going to, no, he's not going to fall on it. Segretown's going to get there first, I believe, at the 15. And it will be Segretown's ball. First down and 10 at the Titusville 15. 5.29 to go. And the Rockets, big snap over the head. He just have fired that one from a cannon. <laughs> I guess. Chase has to chase it. Ooh. Yeah, I think that was one of those things he didn't know whether to kick it out of bounds or kick it towards the end zone, which probably would have been the smartest thing, kick it, a, kick it out of the end zone and take the safety. That was just a third down, though. Now Titus oh, that will, was. Yeah. yeah. Titus now is going to have to take a timeout trying to get their defense on the field. They want to put their first D back in there, uh, and, and I think that's a good move. This game's uh, yeah, far from being over. Well, probably not going to score 25 points in five minutes, but uh, – Nonetheless, you've got to try to change that momentum a little bit with 5.29 to go. And uh, Segertown having control of this ball game in the second half. And hats off to them. I'll tell you, when you're down 28 nothing at halftime and you have some things going against you right to the end of the half, and then you come back out here emotionally up like that. Uh, says a lot for not only the coaching staff, but the kids at Segertown stepping up like that. And that's true. Uh, I mean, you know, you're down – had you know they had some bad breaks towards the end of the first half. You're down 28 nothing. I mean, well, and you know, Mike, you, know, you, you got to really question, you know, whether you know, you, you know, that's a sign of a good coach when you can motivate his players yeah. enough to, you know, to put well, forth the effort take, that they uh, did. A couple of times they shot themselves in the foot. You take that away from them, and uh, you've got yourself a situation uh, entirely different than a 35-10 score. They should have at least one more touchdown, and. Uh, then you don't know what would happen had they scored earlier because that changes the momentum even more so. First down and 10. Ball's given off. First man through coming across the right side. Cuts it upfield inside the 10 to about the 9-yard line. It's Fitzner, and uh, he'll pick up a couple on the play. <coughs> Coaching staff from Sigurdsson says, hurry up, let's run another one, knowing the clock's against them right now. They're up over the line quickly. Mishnack goes wide to the left, back to split. Ball's given off to Taylor. Taylor across the left side, inside the, close to the five-yard line. Close to a first down. Brings up a third down. I think that was Cody Sines on the tackle. Third down and short for Segertown. Backs again, stay split. Schultz. Ball's given off to Fitzner. He's coming out to the right side and breaks one, drives inside to about the three. And it's Hogue again. Hogue the with a tackle. Brown missed him up uh, around the 12. Whiffed on him, and uh, Hogue makes a stop, but uh, they're inside the five to about the two. And it's first down and goal for Sagertown. 420 left to go. 425 here in the ball game. Running quickly. <laughs> Ball's given off to Schultz. Schultz drives, and he's going to be stopped. Maybe a half-yard gain. Brings up second down and goal. Again, 35-10, and once again, Segertown threatening the Rockets. Rose will go wide to the left. Fitzner and Schultz split in the back. Taylor in motion. The ball goes to Schultz. Schultz drives straight ahead. He's in for the score. 
So Mitchell Schultz pushes, pushes it in from two yards out, and that brings the score up 35-16 as they get set for the two-point conversion. So they take advantage of the high snap uh, against Titusville, and they get the ball first down at our 15, and about three or four plays later, they punch it in for their second TD of the night. 3.51 to go in the ball game. Might as well go for two. That put you, what, two touchdowns. Double wing in motion now. Berger stacks up on the left side, a tight end. Ball's given off to Fitzner. He's coming to the right side and fumble. fumble. And that play is going to go nowhere. So the two-point conversion will be no good. Austin Christie on the uh, smack. A couple of times with boys down there. Some good collisions out there. Stern's getting up slowly also, but they're all okay. Going off the field is uh, we watch that once again. A big hit here by Titusville to uh, stop this particular two-point conversion. Christie, well, he runs into his own man. That's what caused the fumble. Hogue was right there in the stop anyway. So the uh, two-point conversion is no good. 3.51 to go. It's 35-16. You know, when you have a kid named James Taylor out on the field, Wait for it's no wonder all the hits <laughs> keep coming. <laughs> oh, Thank you and good night. Yes, that's good, Luke. Yeah. That's the, that's the, I wonder if that's the same one I didn't know in the elevator. That's right. You Pittsburgh do have a James Taylor, Taylor story. story. I yeah. do, yeah. Met him in an elevator, didn't know who he was. But I'll tell you what, we've been fortunate this whole uh, football season to have such great weather. I know it's cold tonight, but this is this is football weather here. But it is. We it haven't is. had any rain or snow on a Friday night. No, no. Bite your tongue. You got one more game. <laughs> you got one more game. <laughs> well, I'm kind of hoping it's really nasty next week. Warren doesn't like to play in the mud. Sagertown has Gerard. Titusville has Warren. Okay, so Titusville now will get the opportunity to um, field this short kick. I'm sure they're going to go to a short kick, the onside kick. 55 is kicking. They got a different kicker. So. Kyle Tharp. <laughs> and it's a short kick. It's going to come and be restarted. recovered nicely by Titusville. That's a good job over there by, um, who is it, 86. And that Caldwell. That's a nice job by Caldwell. Come over there and cover that ball. Yeah, because it, it didn't look like it was going to roll out of bounds. I thought it was going to go out of bounds. I thought he just let it go, but he kept playing the ball. It's a good thing he did because it was going to die. Yeah. And uh, so Ryan Caldwell with the uh, recovery of that onside kick. That's a good play. 349 left to go. Titusville first down. And I noticed there's uh, a lot of the first stringers coming back out yep. for Titusville. That's what I do. First team back out on the field. Corklin sends signs to the right and will trip Three wideouts to the right for Titusville. Corklin, give the ball off. No, going to show the quick pass to the outside. It's, it's signs. signs. Cody Signs gets to the outside across the 45 to about the 48. Close to a first down. First time we've thrown that quick jet out. Yeah, and it was there. Yeah, it was. Good play defensively in the far side for uh, Segertown. Because that play had uh, a lot of yards written on it. Second down, and uh, we'll call it second down and one for Titusville. Coming up after the game on the Internet side, we'll have the uh, player of the game. 3-15 oh, with clock running here in the fourth quarter. Brown, Carter will come wide to the left. Got doubles to the right side. Titusville now is going to restack here on the left side with Chase Ackerman coming over. Trips on the left, wide out. Corkland gives the ball to Hogue. Hogue drives ahead. He'll have it up for the first down as he takes it to midfield. So it'll be first down and 10. Titus will at the 50. And Segretown's going to take a timeout. I believe. Yeah, Titus, Titusville doesn't have anything. <laughs> so it'll be first down and 10. Uh, when Titusville here as uh, I think Segretown wants to make some substitutions and... Uh, with 2.49 to go. 35-16, Titusville. Two different halves of play tonight. Uh, Titusville dominating the first half. Segertown coming out and uh, taking care of the second half. Uh, Titusville having to uh, bring in their first unit once again because of the play of Segertown. So um, I think Segertown is going to do some subbing here. And I think that's why they took the time out, get some of the younger boys some playing time here in this varsity game. Good first half for the Rockets, good second half for Sagertown. Yeah, you have to, uh, again, we, we 
not to uh, continue to repeat ourselves all the time, but you do have to give credit to Segertown. They could have packed it in uh, at the end of the first half because Titusville uh, had them 28 nothing. But uh, and that was an emotional last couple three minutes of the first half. But, uh, but they come out ready to play. Okay, we're getting set to go as uh, Segertown sends their team back out on the field. And uh, Titusville still with their, I believe their first offense still out there. <laughs> Corklin at quarterback gives to Hoag. Hoag drives straight ahead, and he'll be in around the 46-yard line, bring up a second down. And now we'll see Titusville appears to be getting ready to mass sub also with two minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the ball game. And there are subs coming in for Titusville. We'll try to get names as we go along here. But we have some numbers out there we don't have on our sheet. Titusville now is going to trip strong side left. In motion, Stearns, ball's given straight ahead to Hoag. Hoag drives straight, still driving, still driving, and he may have driven himself into a first down situation around the 40-yard line of Segertown. Clock will start at 156, and it is a first down for Titusville, so uh, uh, it's just about an hour running out the clock for the Rockets. So first down and 10, Titusville. Leading 35 to uh, 16. The ball is on the 40 of Sagertown. Titus will again subbing. 135 clock running. Titus will use as much time as they can, I'm sure. Chase back in at quarterback for Titusville. And now we have a delay of game against Titusville. I need to get the subs in in time, so they'll back us up five yards. Kind of a moot point at this stage in the game at 126, left in the ball game. <clears throat> so Titus will now come out over the ball. It'll be a first down and 15, the ball out to 45. Ackerman at quarterback. Gives the ball off. No, Ackerman's going to keep it. He's rolling to his left, still rolling. Wants to throw. Oops, he's going to get caught. And he's going to be dropped clear back at the 40 of uh, Segertown. And a uh, big loss. Uh, probably going to give him some forward motion at about the 42. However, there is a flag on the play. Yeah, he just... You know, I think that was one of those. I don't know what the – it was a broken play or if he was just trying to get outside and just run some time off. I know. I think there's a hold against Titusville. Yeah. It's a lock. chop block. Chop block. Well, that's why you get these guys in get them experience. So that will step it off, and uh, that's going to bring up um, – well, it's going to bring up a whole lot of yards. <laughs> I don't have a calculator. We'll let the first uh, and a lot. Yeah. The ball's back at the uh, 26. Titus has got to get to the 30 at the other end of the field. So it's got to be about 30. 45. I'm sure Josh 30, Sterling 30, at uh, yards. Josh Sterling at the Herald listening right now is, uh, really appreciates. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, mark that one down, Josh. Exact numbers here. Yeah. <laughs> first and a hey, whole lot. Josh. Josh, I expect a quote in the in the Herald tomorrow morning. First and a lot. First and a lot. Trips right Titusville. Chase gives the ball up to, I believe, Hogue, and he's going to get hit and dropped for no gain. And uh, that will probably be the last play of the game with 35 seconds left to go. Yeah. Titus will probably not call another play once it's marked. 35 to 16, Titus will on top with the clock winding down, and I suspect uh, that's going to be the last play, 20 seconds. Or if not, he's going to take a knee, I can tell you. <laughs> he better take a knee. <laughs> well, it's second down, yeah. Second down yeah. and uh, that whole lot that we talked about. And I think and uh, now it is 45 drive down. seconds, 45. So that's going to end the ball game as the clock runs out. Final score here at Segertown. Titusville 35, Segertown 16. We'll be back with a wrap and some conversation right after this. Stay with us. 
Big G Tire and Auto on the High Town Road in Titusville is your home to the largest selection of tires for small compact cars to large semis. Need an oil change, inspection, or repair? Big G can service your vehicle while it's in the shop. Protect your vehicle with our fluid film undercoating to keep the rust at bay. Big G will keep you on the road. Tires for any size vehicle and auto repair. Come see us at Big G Tire and Auto on Hyde Town Road in Titusville. Lugio Graphics is ready to help you with all of your screen printing and embroidery projects. They can take orders for as few as six pieces to thousands of pieces for your club, special event, business, family reunion, or just your group of friends. Lugio Graphics can custom design the artwork for you or use your own design or creative ideas to come up with great looking apparel. 1-800-645-7430 or stop by our shop and talk to our experts about your upcoming project. Lugio Graphics for all your custom screen printing and embroidery needs. Titusville chiropractor Adam Middleton welcomes you to the Titusville office of Middleton Chiropractic. Dr. Middleton is committed to improving the function of your nervous system so that you can have a higher quality of life. Through their office, you'll receive the best care through the use of modern chiropractic techniques and technology. Call us today and we can develop a chiropractic plan specific for you. 827-9970 or visit our website for more information. Middleton Chiropractic, your chiropractor in Titusville. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall in Titusville invite you in to view some of the finest jewelry in Northwest Pennsylvania. Morelli's is also home to unique gifts from area artisans, including chocolates from Roma Lo of Erie. They also carry an extensive selection of engagement settings and loose diamonds to create the ideal ring for the ideal person. Morelli's also offers jewelry repair and they buy gold and silver. Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall, Titusville. Morrison Builder Supply in Titusville carries just about everything you need for your next home fix-it project or for contractors working on any size project. Whether it's electrical, lumber, plumbing, or paint, Morrison's has supplies to allow you to complete your project and get the job done. Attention outdoorsmen, Morrison's too has the best selection of guns, ammo, clothing, and other accessories in stock and take advantage of great deals on muck boots. Morrison's and Morrison's too on West Central Avenue, Titusville. I love Titusville Area Hospital because it's a small hospital. The last two quarterly reports, Titusville has been in the top five community hospitals and patient satisfaction in the state of Pennsylvania. I think patients are given the opportunity to be cared for right at home rather than having to travel. Everything's contained right here. Being part of the community and knowing the community makes me do a much better job. We already have a personal aspect with them. I think this little hospital is a perfect thing for this little city. Now, back to Titusville Rocket Football on the stream. And welcome back to the Titusville Herald post-game show. Don't forget you can pick up your copy of the Titusville Herald tomorrow morning and read all about tonight's game. And, or, uh, and the stats will be fantastic. Yeah, do you got that, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot Josh was listening for stats. And I a, just, lot. Well, yeah. a lot. A <laughs> lot. My visit, apologies. <laughs> also visit the Titusville Herald online, <laughs> TitusvilleHerald.com. Let's uh, do a quick recap of tonight's game, gentlemen. Well, my opinion, quite honestly, is two halves. Uh, Titusville played the first half, dominated. Sagertown dominated the second half. And I think of the, as far as being impressed, I was very impressed with the Sagertown coming out like they did, down 28 nothing, and coming back. I think Titus was going to have to talk about that because they got a tough game coming up next week with Warren positive side is Titus will play very well for uh, the first half, especially with their running game and their passing game. Mike, I thought that they had a balanced attack. Everybody functioned well. Uh, some very nice catches out there. Uh, Corkin threw the ball well, but uh, and Lee, Aaron Lee ran the ball well. So I thought we had a good balanced attack in that first half. Yeah, and that's the thing. If they, you know, we hate to say if they would have played like that all year, obviously with, you know, some of the competition we're playing. But, uh, I mean, they look sharp. They look crisp. They established a running game. Opened up the passing game for them. You know, they didn't play mistake-free football. They had a couple touchdowns come back. But, you know, I mean, it was a, it, it, if you looked, you wouldn't have thought it was the same, you know, Rocket Ball Club that we've watched for the last, you know, six or seven weeks. Well, on the positive side for uh, Titusville is you pick up a win. And as Mike mentioned, uh, winning begets winning. you, you, you got to learn how to win. And uh, the best way to do that is to pick up a couple wins. Uh, downside for Sagertown as they go 0 for 9 now, but uh, 
at the same time, I think they've got something to build on with that second half of play. So both teams come out of this with some good things happening, and I suspect that uh, our coaching staff at Titusville will talk about the second half a little bit with the kids and get them ready for Warren. I expect a good ball game out of Warren. Don't be surprised about the Warren game. You, uh, you. I'm with you there. Uh, Sagertown has Gerard next week, and Titusville is home for the final uh, game of the season. It'll be senior night at Carter Field. All right, guys, time now for the uh, Fox's uh, Pizza Family Video Player of the Game. Well, I don't know. We were just sitting here talking to several guys. Aaron Lee's had a really good ball game. I think Lee rushed for probably 150 yards tonight. One of them, of course, that 88-yarder uh, that he broke. But uh, I think one of the kids that I was impressed with, you guys can do, you know, change this if you like. Uh, I like Zach Carter. I thought he had a good ball game. Uh, I thought he made a couple of very nice catches. And uh, uh, I just thought overall he played a good ball game for Titusville. And I, I guess I'm voting for Zach Carter. I'll, I'll agree with you on that, Jim. Uh, I think, you know, he had a couple touchdowns in the game, and not only that, uh, he was able to hang on the ball, when, especially yeah. when he got wide open over the middle. Something we and haven't that, been able to do this year. Yeah, yeah. and, you know, and that, you know, it was just establishing an offense is what our problem has been like the last few weeks. And, uh, you know, the combination of the running and the passing game, but, you know, obviously being able to catch the ball had a lot to do with it. So congratulations, Zach. I'm not going to disagree. You want me to disagree? I don't care. I won't. I'll, <laughs> I'll stick with what you guys uh, said. Uh, so congratulations, uh, Mr. Carter. You are the uh, Fox's Pizza <laughs> Family Video Player of the Game. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. We're back home next week for the final game of the season. Already. Already the final game of the season. I mean, ten weeks gone by. <laughs> it's because of the nice weather, though, Luke. You've done, a, you've done a good job with our new weatherman at the stream. And, Adam, uh, we've got ourselves some good weather coming up next week. Absolutely. Should be good enough. Expect to see everybody out there Friday night for the last home game. All right. A big thanks to Armstrong Cable. Wow. What a great time tonight. A big thanks to, uh, to Kevin Tomini, also uh, Dwayne Kohler and uh, Jeff Corey. A big thanks to those folks. My college check, Jim Bodemer. I'm Luke Rio. And Rocket Football at home for senior night at Carter Field next week. Rocket Football on the stream, a presentation of Farmers National Bank. Come home to Farmers by Donovan and Bauer Auto Group for GM and Chrysler. They're on the Hightown Road in Titusville. By the Colonial Machine Company, proud supporters of the Titusville Rockets. By Morrison Builder Supply for all of your home improvement projects. By Big G Tire and Auto. Get back on the road with Big G. By Middleton Chiropractic, start living a higher quality of life. By Bluegill Graphics for all of your custom screen printing and embroidery needs. By Armstrong Cable, one wire, infinite possibilities. By Titusville Area Hospital, high tech, top docs. By Acorn Acres for funeral, weddings, or everyday arrangements. By Morelli's Jewelry and Repair at the Drake Mall in Titusville. By the Cranberry Mall for everything you've been looking for. Rocket Football on the Stream also brought to you by the Titusville Moose Family Center 84. By the Blue Canoe, by Bars Insurance, by DNS Printing by Hasbrook Sand and Gravel, by Erie Insurance, the Moore Insurance Agency, by Helsinki Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, and by Boonies, great food, daily specials. This webcast is copyrighted by Lightning Strike Productions and the Titusville Area School District for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this webcast without consent is prohibited. originating from the birthplace of the oil industry. We are the stream.